This podcast is sponsored by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash media hole to get your free 30 day trial and over 180,000 audiobooks to choose from. You can listen to it on your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or any other fucking thing you want to listen to it on. Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Audible. Once again, audibletrial.com slash media hole. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Media Hole Podcast. This is a weekly podcast in which we talk about movies and comics and television and other shit and games and news and oh my God. We lost 45 minutes of an entire podcast partway through because the fucking Zoom decided to run out of batteries because yeah. life sucks. And we don't use headphones anymore, so we didn't notice. Nathan got up to go get a drink and then came back and he's like, hey, why are all the lights off? So, that's great, especially because most of what we lost was complete improv and I don't remember what we said. No, nah, it was it was most we got we start we talked about Tekken, we talked about fighting games stuff specifically, people trying to make fighting game movies, all cops are bastards, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, wear a fucking mask, uh guillotine out front of Jeff Bezos' house. Yeah, let's go back to that one. That one's real good. That let's, one's great. Let's get other symbols of <laughs> killing rich people out there. Yeah. Like, um Did they used to burn did they burn rich people at the cross ever? Like, as just like, no. Let's do some public lynchings. Uh, not really. Not lynching. Like, let's symbolically, because I don't want to kill Jeff Bezos. I want him to uh, get lose all his money. Well, I think Jeff Bezos just needs to. I think the best punishment for someone like a Jeff Bezos or a Elon Musk is to simply, like, try to live life working full time at a McDonald's. You know what I mean? Like minimum wage job full time, and you'll never be able to do, get it do ahead undercover of that. boss. But you don't work. But don't they don't Jeff- get to go back, and they don't get to keep their money. No, Jeff Bezos doesn't get to go to Amazon. Oh, he gets to go to McDonald's. No, undercover boss. Except you're just a rich guy who has to go work at a job, like a shitty teenage job. Yeah, like you got to go work and uh, be a cashier in a grocery store. No, I'd say Jeff Bezos. Well, uh, be cashier at a McDonald's. You have to be a cashier yeah. at a bunch of places because that's where I you would get say all the yeah. Karens. If we could get Jeff Bezos to like a, he doesn't get to keep his money because he's a piece of shit. Yeah, but also his punishment. I'm not saying kill him. Not saying send him to jail. I'm saying have him try to live life working minimum wage. Or let's take let's take away all of his money. Yeah. And have him live on what uh, the app, have him live on a minimum wage salary. Yeah. Since he has all that money, he could go with that. He just looks at that money. He doesn't get to live in any of his houses. Yeah. He doesn't get to go live with any of his family. He has to get pay, get paid with a lower Amazon. Don't make him work there. Because I don't think that... I don't think he should the, work for Amazon. No, I don't think that gets the, an undercover boss. I don't think that gets the point across. Yeah. People get to see their shitty work conditions of like the lower level and how their employees are treated like shit by the by like a manager. They always pick a location where the manager has like a problem. Yeah. So or and like then the undercover boss fixes the problem with the worker at that one place. Yeah. Like where he's like, here's like twenty thousand dollars for your college education, but I'm still paying you minimum wage here, like. For for yeah, like a month, KFC Jeff has that, to has to work or a car. He doesn't have to work at an Amazon, but he has to take that money and live like he's working at Amazon. Yeah, he gets paid what the bottom level person at Amazon gets paid, mm-hmm. and then you live on that, and you don't get your houses, you don't get your money, you don't you get, a get car. nothing. You, you have to pay for everything with that minimum wage salary, like anybody else. Yeah, you get he gets. Like two thousand dollars to start. Because do you know he what? He has to get a place where he can get first and last month rent, month's rent. Yeah. And he has to get like a vehicle or take Ubers to and from work. Yeah. Or or public. And transit. also, let's just double it down. He has to be uh, an Amazon in a major city. <laughs> yeah. Because it can't be like oh fucking I was just Amazon warehouse say, in the middle of Iowa. I was just gonna say like, Amazon's based out of Seattle. I'm saying in Seattle. Not work for Amazon, like work at a McDonald's or a Walmart or whatever, some shitty job. Doesn't actually have to. Go. I don't think he has to actually work there because it does. Because he's just gonna be like, "Oh, this sucks." Um, no, I think he should have to put the amount of labor other people have to put in for him, and then walk away with the amount of money they get paid, and then he'll realize, "Oh shit!" But they have. I'm the worst. They need to do the undercover thing so that people don't like act like he like. Oh, it's Jeff Bezos. We got to make it look like everything looks good. No, because that's what I'm saying. He has to work at Walmart. Yeah. 
Like, and then I think people would still recognize I think Jeff the, Bezos at a Walmart. They would. But also, I think he, he would. It's a double edged sword of people recognizing him. Because mm-hmm. also, if Jeff Bezos worked at a Walmart near me, I'd probably be like, hey, fuck you, asshole. Is Jeff Bezos actually like a self made, like, bajillionaire well they're all self self-made no no i know but i mean like um like you know how people are like oh elon built his shit out of nothing but like but like he he's from a like a blood diamond dynasty yeah um like elon musk's situation is that he had his family like was rich in south africa even though he's not close with his dad so like he grew up knowing other people in business, so even if he didn't necessarily have that quiche, he would have been he able had to just go to a job. Knowledge, like yeah. and the connections, right? Um, even if he wasn't using his dad's quiche, he still learned things from his dad being a fucking big business boy that other people don't get. Uh, yeah, this um, uh, Jeff Bezos looks like he just made that money. Yeah, I think his parents or something gave him a big loan to start the business. Yeah, but a big loan, like, they, it could... Well, if it if he referred to it as a big loan, it might actually have been, like, they gave me, like, $50,000 or something. Yeah. Which is a big loan for normal people. But yeah. where Donald Trump is, like, he gave me a small loan of a million dollars. I think like, I think Jeff Bezos, his parents were in business. Like, they were, like, that type of thing. And they then, probably made, like, 300000 a year or something. Yeah, and then they loaned him, I think, a significant amount of money to start up Amazon. Probably. He worked on Wall Street as well. Oh, he, okay. Yeah, so so he had lots of lots of help with yeah. everybody. Mark Zuckerberg yeah. started his business by being a piece of shit. Mark Zuckerberg is is also, like, pretty self-made. Like, you know. I think, But he was going to fucking Harvard. Like, yeah, like, his parents are well off. Yeah. Or whenever, what was it? People were like, Microsoft started in the garage or something. Yeah. But it's like, no, it started in the garage of a multi million dollar home. Yeah. Like, Bill Gates was his, a rich kid growing up. Yeah. He just had the education well to off. make, to get better. Same with. Well, he didn't have education. Like, Bill Gates was just like, he self taught how to do computer shit. Yeah. Fucking Bill Gates is worth 109 billion as well. Yeah. Just give up your money, man. John McAfee. <laughs> John McAfee. The best man in the world. Yeah. Oh, I've created a compound full of guns and drugs in Colombia and I've taken over it. crazy. Small I have my own army. Yeah, also wasn't... And I he ran for president for like ten minutes in twenty sixteen. Yeah. Do you remember that? He had a video of him and like uh coked out uh like women all around him. In this video where he's like, I'm going to be president of the United States of America. Um, he started right, McAfee so, because people were worried about computer viruses, even though it didn't work. And nobody he, nobody really knew what a virus was, so he was just basically grifted his way into making antivirus software. Okay. So. Yeah. Bill Gates is dead. Yeah. He was an attorney. Oh, yeah. But he was also a philanthropist. Because okay. of that pussy, because <laughs> Bill Gates' mom, Mary Ann Maxwell, yeah. or Mary Maxwell Gates now, or it was, but they're divorced. Actually, she's dead. They okay. didn't get divorced. She died. <laughs> um, she was a uh, she was a school teacher, businesswoman, and um, she was the first female president of uh, the, United the United States, the United Way. <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, yeah, like if you so here's the difference, right? The yeah, second who somebody the calls you a shit. philanthropist, you're rich. You're a full-on rapist. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I would say, you know, if you're a normal person and you give money to charity, you're just a normal person. Yeah. But if you're a rich person and you give money to charity, you're a philanthropist. Mm-hmm. If you're a rich person who gives uh, money to charity, the character that most resembles you in media is... Uh, fuck, what's her name? Tony Stark. The really hot lady from The Good Place. The one where her whole thing is that everyone keeps oh. calling her hot. It's uh, I, Jamil Jamil. No, that's the actress. Uh oh, oh, her name is is beautiful. It's, it's pretty close to her name, like her uh, real name. Oh my god, I like that show a lot. Jamila Jamil is her real name. Yeah, what's the character she plays? Oh, she's married to James Blake. Jesus, is it? So wait. James Blake looks like shit. I take it back. Okay. Um, fuck. God. What? 
I hate it when... Wikipedia, just tell me the most famous character she's played, please. Uh, it's like Lahani or something like that, right? Yeah. I'm trying to find it. Television. It should be fucking... Oh, Tahani Al-Jamil. Tahani. Yeah. She's great. <laughs> yeah, she's great. She's, she's oh, hilarious. It's the same last name. Wait, isn't her sister in that show named Jamila? No, her sister is uh, something else. Yeah. The, the her death is so dumb. Like in the oh, show, the, she gets crushed under the weight the of her statue. sister's accomplishments. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck you, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Thanks, Audible. Thanks, Audible. <laughs> uh. So, uh, what what did what do we want to talk about that we were okay talking about a second time? Um. I don't know. Can oh, we... fuck pizza, pizza. Fuck pizza, pizza. They Pe- gave people's info to the cops for no reason. Well, AKA unprompted. called being a snitch. Being a simp for the police. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you imagine like a cop coming up to you and asking for your friend's information and saying like, "Oh, here you go, sir." Yeah. No, you'd be like. Why? What do you want this for? Why should I give it to you? I would just call him and be like, hey, there's a cop looking you, for you. Do you Why? need a lawyer? Oh, okay. Hey, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I don't know where he is. <laughs> you just talked to him on the phone. Yeah, I heard his voice. I don't know where he is, yep. but you can reach him. <clears throat> and <laughs> quick reminder to not have face, fingerprint, or iris scan as your phone password uh, because the police are allowed to get that from you without a warrant. Just whereas- point the phone at you. Yeah, but whereas the um or or make you put your fingerprint on it. I honestly whereas, can't fucking use it right now because if in my car, like it's the only time when I'm like looking down at my phone out of out of red light. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry, guys. <laughs> um, out of red light, like you know, I look down, my phone opens up. Mm-hmm. Whenever I'm at work, I have to wear a mask at work, <laughs> so it doesn't fucking work for me. Cause, yeah, you know, the part that it mostly sees, which is like your jaw and your mouth, because it like you know eyes. Yeah. That's where it detects. It can't do any of that. It doesn't work if I change my fucking glasses. Damn. <laughs> if I'm wearing sunglasses, it doesn't recognize it. So I think I'm just going to turn it off. My yeah. my password takes like a second to put in anyways. Mm-hmm. Also, you're fucking crazy if you have a six word letter password. Yeah, six digit. Yeah. Yeah, my fucking... My sister's Android, boyfriend has that. The big Android one was like uh, the pattern password. Yeah, that was, that's a good one. I think that's cool. My, But if it goes more than five... Like little knot things, crazy. <laughs> no. What do you I mean? Disagree. It, oh, you good? Disagree. How was yours using the whole fucking yeah, board? Well, I was using the whole thing. I'm just gonna turn off Face ID right now. <laughs> but here's the thing. Can I turn off? Fa- I want to turn off Face ID for unlocking my phone. But, but you want to have it for spending money. Uh, I don't use Apple Pay, but like when I go, oh, I instead of having to type in my password for my bank account and stuff, you have that. I can use else. Face ID, and I'd rather keep that. That's honestly why I still have the fingerprint thing. Yeah, so I might just, you know, I'll look at that later. I'm not going to do it now. But I should still keep my phone out because that's where. So also, uh, a, f- a fun fact for the <laughs> that happened on the previous episode. I came in, fucking sit down. Nathan started up the podcast. He's like, oh, I have no fucking news this week. Because Nathan just didn't write anything down. <laughs> so I was doing the news, but I'm going like, uh... University of Alabama State cannot confirm reported COVID-19 parties took place. Mixed feeling as lockdown eases in England. Like, I was just saying shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, did we talk about Evo's canceled? Uh, we didn't yet. We talked about it on the other I know. Thing. That's what I meant. Did we talk about it again? So yeah. Evo's canceled. Evo is canceled following... Joey uh, Kuehler. Yeah, the, the owner, Found- CEO guy, founder. Yeah. Uh, you know, being accused of multiple counts of... He, um... Assault. He assaulted... Specifically, the more high-profile one was a player who was under the age of 18. Which is yucky People are fuck. talking about measures for future uh, events where, like... People under 18 would wear a wristband or they because, you know, they all wear badges and shit is that they'd get like a different colored lanyard. Like if you're over if you're above age, they should do it based off of drinking age, actually, to make it very simple for everyone. Yeah. Like if it's like make it bright fucking orange if you're a minor. If you're an adult black, make it not even noticeable. Yeah, something like that. And if. If that child switches with an adult, I guess that child just wants to be hit on by older men. 
Also, I think maybe don't uh, hit on people at things. Maybe. Yeah, maybe have a conversation with them, and if you feel like it's going in that direction, check the lanyard, <laughs> number one. Number two, maybe throw out something, throw out a soft feeler. Don't maybe fucking immediately go, all right, this has been a good conversation. We've only been talking about fighting games and nothing else. Would you like to suck my cock? <laughs> yeah. I, well, my no? Is- <laughs> fucking cunt, SJW prude. My vibe is that uh, if you're the CEO of something, maybe somebody who's at an event that you're in charge of is not somebody you should try to get with because mm-hmm. there's a there's an unstable power dynamic there. And it, let's just let's just go right into Smash because that's where yep. we lost before. So if you're a top player as well, maybe yeah. don't try and fuck other competitors, especially when they are visibly younger than you. Yeah. So when we left off, we were talking about Nairo. Yes, Nairo, and I was saying I don't, I don't follow any he, of this. Yes, yeah. Nathan does not know, so this is all on me. Yeah, Nairo is a top player around for Smash Four and Ultimate. Yeah, he was. Um, oh fuck! I said yeah because I read a text. Um, he was a, he, like he was recognized by Nintendo. Like when they had sh- sh- things showing off, like the game, they had Nairo come out fight three casuals. And, and to be like, oh, look, this is how fun the game is for casuals and pro players. Look, they're all having a good time. But it's like Nairo is 1v3ing these people. Yeah. So Nairo in like 2013 or 12 or something, he was 20. Um, the abusee was named Captain Zack. Yeah. He was 15. Yuck. Yuck, 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 yuck. Um, the but also when you read when you read through Captain Zack's statement, his like he 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 opened it up with like, hey, if you're related to me in some way, if you're one of my family members, fucking leave right now. I'm not ready to have this conversation with you, because he posted things from his Discord, like a chat he had on Discord, and he's a 15 year old boy, yeah, a gay 15 year old, getting hit on by someone he thought was attractive and he looked up to. Yeah, and he was like, "God damn, I'm so excited!" So when you read through it, he's like, "Bro, my bussy is wet." Not that's actually a fucking line. I was like, "God damn, man, you're horny." Yeah, but again, but child. That, yeah, he's a child, and the other person was an adult. And yeah, they, did they wind up actually doing something IRL, or was it just the, the chat? No, were... it was full on IRL, okay. and there was other players who were well aware of it, and that's the thing. That's the why that's it's a the big purge a big right deal, now. Yeah. Is it's not just these things were happening and no one knew. It's these things were happening and everyone was ignoring it. That sucks, man. Yeah. So there, the thing with Nairo, Nairo immediately deleted all his accounts. People who were friends with him were like trying to backpedal. And then it was also like them going like, hey, man, but you knew. You didn't step in. You didn't say, hey, this is fucked up. And Nairo also blatantly lied. I think Tweak... I think it was Tweak, who is another Smash Pro, was like, "Hey, yeah. um, he went up to him. He's like, what's the what's the deal? With, like, what are you what are you to him?'" And he's just, like, "I just think he has a lot of potential." Like, blatantly lying and Tweak, he's like, "I should have pushed and I didn't." Yeah, I didn't ask, and that's so fucked up of me. I shouldn't. I should have done that because now I've allowed this fifteen year old to be hurt. Yeah. Also, you know you've done something wrong in life if you're sending a fifteen year old boy hush money. <laughs> Yeah, that's like you Captain know. Captain Zach was, was was giving getting sent like two thousand dollars a month or something by Nairo and Nairo's brother. Oh, that's how you know you done something wrong. Yeah, if you're sending to like money shut, to shut the shut fuck up, the don't fuck say up. anything. But it's like the guilt that he has. And then the other one, there's a the, there was another one, a little more different. Usually, when you see this in a nerd community, you go, "Damn, good for that kid." But then when you're an adult and you see it, you're like, "Oh, damn." <laughs> Yeah. There was a 24-year-old woman who fucked a 14-year-old boy. Yeah, no, that's not I know anything. That's no, that's bad. Yeah. That's bad. Remember back in the day though, whenever you would hear like as a kid, when you would hear like this hot teacher fucked like this 15-year-old and you're like, <sighs> "Yeah, like that would be so film, cool. That's my boy." Yeah, it's just porn. <laughs> yeah. No, the movie That's My Boy is about that and it's like, "Yeah, see, this is fun." And you're like, but then this also Adam Sandler's character is like entirely fucked up and he's a bad dad. No, but like that's the that's the bit. It's mm-hmm. fun. 
It's a fun movie. It's a fun, fun thing to happen to a young boy. It's like, no, this is bad, and we've known it was bad, but we're for whatever reason, the culture decided to make it sound good. But yeah, that's disgusting. That's horrible. Uh, my thoughts are out with folks out mm-hmm. there. That's fucked. Cancel Smash. No. Because <laughs> there's still a lot of good people. Yeah, sure. In Smash. No, yeah, I get it. There's also smaller one. He's not as well known as the other guys. Actually, I can't remember the name of the woman because she wasn't really in like the scene that I saw. Yeah. Keitaro, who was a guy I followed. I followed him and Nairo. Keitaro is like 30. He fucked a girl who was just turning 18 that he got drunk. Like oh, she invited her to a party. Got They got her super drunk and he had his way. That's disgusting. That's like a 12 year age difference yep bad but like man people are and like people are, everyone's bummed out about smash right now yeah uh, been they're like i can't believe like this is such a depressing time but all the top people the ones who yeah. aren't bad even the one who you think would be a villain which is leffen mm-hmm. leffen was classically this like because you know that you know how like they have there's gods of like a specific game yeah like how so like Hbox is a is a god Mango's a god uh, for Smash for Melee, yeah. Leffen was this guy who came in after they decided the five gods and he just beat the shit out of them all the time, and he had this like really fun rivalry with Hbox. Mm-hmm. So he everyone and he looks like a villain, he looks like a like a rich kid who would come and be like my father. <laughs> yeah, he's the Seto Kaiba of the Smash world. Yeah, actually, yeah, exactly, he is. But then it just turns... Then he's just, like, actually a really nice, wholesome dude. That's good. He just, like, the, would talk shit all the time. Yep. He was... uh He won Evo for Smash. Oh, cool. In 2019. And it was, like, his goal in life to win it. That's cool. Yeah. So, he was just... He made a really nice statement about it. Um. So, do you know who Zero is? No. Zero is a retired Smash player. Okay. He lived in this house. There was a like a twenty seven person streamer house oh, the that Sky Williams hype had. House. What? The conservative hype house. <laughs> the melee hype. It was not very conservative, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Because um an artist I follow on Twitter, she is on a permanent hiatus right now mm-hmm. because she she was the first uh, major smash thing. If we were doing the podcast, I would have done an entire episode about her. Yeah. She was in a relationship with a guy, the most emotionally abusive relationship i've ever heard of hi future nathan here in editing uh i've decided to cut this part out because ian goes into great detail repeating this woman's story of abuse and some really horrible actions and it's and it's extremely upsetting and uh depressing and so you can google it if you'd like uh but i'm just gonna flat out remove it from the rest of this podcast uh, so we now return to your regularly scheduled podcast. I've pretty much been going through with like all the Smash players I follow, mm-hmm. and if they haven't said anything about it, like if they're just being radio silent, that's bad. unfollowed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're uh, you're out. So Mango said, "Fuck that shit. That's a nightmare." So I'll follow. <laughs> you can still follow him. Oh, the thing with Keitaro though, I f- yeah, he lived in a house called the Loft House with like three other guys. And they kicked him out. They were like, you have to leave. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. Yep. Which is the thing is, like, they knew. So, they're not great. Uh, Smash is dark. Did you get to touch, uh, like, get to play uh, Min Min? Yep. I did, yeah. How do you like her? Do you do you not like her? <laughs> uh, no, it's or mostly did... that, that whole entire story left me very unhappy. <laughs> oh, oh, man, I actually had a... <laughs> I had a. She's fine. This is dark. I had a funny joke though. <laughs> I was just because when you looked at the the Twitter moment, it was like a picture of Min Min, like in the game, and I was like, "Do you think Sakurai hopped on Twitter today, <laughs> on white Twitter, on like an American Twitter? Twitter?" And he's like, "He like, oh God, look, my brand new character Min Min is at the top of the thing on Smash, and maybe it's positive for oh, once." No. Oh no! Oh <laughs> no! Several Smash Bros convicted of uh, fuck. What accused is it? Of. Accused of sexual misconduct. Shit. Well, yeah, Nintendo did put out a 
statement like we don't support this blah, blah, yeah. blah. well they never supported the scene anyway so no but even though like you know anybody who does bad things are not good people yeah. smash is for good boys and girls yeah oh no, i think that people were saying that as well <laughs> yeah uh i like min min i think she's fun i don't think she's competitively viable i don't care about competitively yeah. viable i couldn't give less of a shit anymore she's fucking stupid though <laughs> she's a fun character to play she's not my fave but yeah. she's cool I'm glad we got the stage and the music. The stage oh, the, the music stage is great. fucking hype. Yeah. Turn off the stage hazards. That's a perfect stage. Well, does the turning off the stage hazards still let the jump pads exist? No, that's a stage hazard. Oh, but the st- the jump pads are fun. I think they're fun, but I'm saying, you know how we like, how like me, Chris, and George like to play? Yeah, I do, but I think, no, but I think and the, the st- fucking problem I think with the stage jump hazards. pads don't feel like stage hazards to me. They feel like a stage quirk that's like usable. But the, like, it's still, you need to think about you it. Know, when, the thing is, is when you turn stage hazards on, you know that Fire Emblem stage that like changes? Yeah. Where, like, first you're on a tower, then you're inside, and there's, like, these two big guys holding up platforms, and then you go to the underground part. Yeah. Where it's, like, hell. With stage hazards off, that map doesn't change. Yeah. It does, because any stage hazard means, like, the does the stage move, or does the stage move you? Yeah. Sort of things. So, the, the platforms, I wouldn't call them hazards. In fact, if I had the option to individually turn off ha- stage hazards... For each map? Yeah, I'd probably leave those ones on. Yeah, I think those ones are good. Because also, the um, even with stage hazards off, the fucking thing up top still spins. Oh, the roof, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's these, there's, these, uh, there's these three bars. They yeah. all meet in the center, and they spin around. If you launch someone, and they hit the, the right spot, yeah. you can tech it and get back down. Yeah. Or you'll hit... And ricochet back to the earth, like, or stage, whatever. Like, it's a good, it's a very good map. Yeah, and the music's fucking fantastic because yeah. it's arms music, and the arms music is great. Mm-hmm. Like, I love how in the trailer, Sakurai was like, "Honestly, we didn't really have to change any of these tracks because it's already a fighting game." Yeah, it's, it's a good, it's just a, it's a good addition to the game. Yeah, I think it's a better addition than Byleth. Oh, for sure, because. Byleth is a boring pick. Yeah. And I think... <laughs> also, I think Nathan they, messaged me, like, Monday morning, <laughs> and he was like, like, you were right, it's Min Min. Yeah. Because I get you that you wanted Twintel. I just think that Twintel is not, like... Yeah, she's an ARMS character. Yeah. But she's the most unique ARMS character. Yeah, she's not Min super Min, representative of the game as, like, an advertisement. Min Min is super, like... Well, and Min Min's, Min Min's special things like the the somersault kick uh, translates better to smash than uh, than uh, twin tails, which is that uh, when hits come into a certain radius of her, they time starts slowing down. Oh, yeah, that would be not yeah. great. Uh, I think what they could have done for Min, because you know how Sakurai said he wanted Ninjala. Yeah, but he said that the producer of Arms was like, "No, take Min Min." I think they could have done a hero thing and just made Ninjala an alternate. Yeah, well, they could have made all of the arms characters alts, but they just used... But he specifically wanted Ninjala. Uh, he said Min Min or Ninjala, and the other guy said Min Min, but he wanted Ninjala more. I f- feel like they could have done a hero situation where the back four skins was Ninjala. Four skins. <laughs> you said it, not me. I did, but still... <laughs> Like, it's I, like last week when you said you were talking about you know I really like the Goku Black arc and you just saw my face. Yeah, that's my favorite part of last week is just like is the moment you saw I smiled when you said Goku Black and we both said no don't shoot him he's not black because <laughs> it's funny. It's a it's a it's a good bit. It's it's, it's like a really unfortunate dubbing thing. Really but here's the thing: dub. I actually have an opinion on Funimation real quick. Yeah. Just dub things straight up. <laughs> Why? Like, make the jokes work in English or whatever, but when you go to dub something, don't change an entire line to push an agenda. <sighs> Remember the really dragon titty anime? Guys? Do you really give a shit? No, actually, I don't. I don't either. Like, I just it's think like, that fine, they should... they're just trying to make a joke work different. If the joke didn't work, it's... The... F- like, but that's not that's not like but the know translation's your audience with bad. The, with the dragon titty anime. I don't know. I most of the people who I know who like that like shit that's like <laughs> totally weirdly feminist. Me. <laughs> yeah. No, not just you, but people online who like that show uh, that are. I'm honestly, it's a lot of women that I know of that like that show. But I don't know. I just think just do also, straight up. 
Yeah, I you know again you can't directly translate a joke and have it work and working oh, no, your I'm own joke in is work, fine. Nah. You're happy that they made that stupid it's just centaur anime have different jokes that are better. Centaur. Isn't it a centaur? What centaur? The the anime about the girl who's a centaur. No, I didn't watch that show. They made all the jokes different in the dub. They made it like uh, it's not quite ghost stories level, but like that kind of mm. thing. No, I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna say I like Konosuba. <laughs> Huh? Konosuba. Is the dub good? It, the dub is great. Yeah. We've gone over this. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. I'm waiting to watch it for the dub for the movie. Like, yeah, I can watch the movie, but, like, Konosuba is not a show I like to pay. Like, I don't sit there, like, and pay attention. <laughs> yeah. I kind of watch it, and then I go, like, look at my phone, look back up. Yeah, this is funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I don't have to see every fucking moment. So... Anyways, I just think uh, women <laughs> should have big boob. <laughs> if you have small do- boob, that is a man. <laughs> How dare you. Or a lolly. <laughs> Lollies are gross. Go fuck yourself. Lollies are gross, yeah. yeah. But Show I, is gross. I'm not a big boob guy, That's personally. Fine. Butts are fine, too. Yeah. There's, char- there's characters in the... Bi- uh, butts, I think, have like are making their way into Japan more. <laughs> they have, yeah. Because before it was like, big boob, no ass. Now it's like... Oh fucking Ass. goddamn! I've played near Automata. Yeah, <laughs> ass. Um, Urgh. ass. There's always like the shots of like the tight ass booty. Yeah, you know, pervert shit. Um, I was actually messaging my friend and about I was talking about some anime, and he was just like, "Oh, it, uh, he sent me some meme about um, interspecies reviewers." Oh god! And I said, "Man, I want to watch that show." <laughs> And he was like, he just kind of said, like, he doesn't want to watch show. Like, if he wants to watch, if he wants to be horny, he'll go look at porn. Yeah. He doesn't be, be like, oh. Yeah, I don't want to Let me watch. just casually watch some titty anime. I don't really want to wa- casually watch titty anime either, unless it's, like, so bad it's funny. You know? Which is, to me, interspecies reviewers. I don't know if it's bad, though. No, okay, well, when I was listening, when I listened to Castle Super Beast, it would be, um, they would, Pat was watching it. You might want to mute this. I did. Oh, you muted it on the computer, not on YouTube. Yep. Um, so Pat was watching it, and like the first three episodes are like pure horny, normal, like fetish stuff. Like, oh, we fuck an elf, we fuck like a slightly weirder monster girl, and then it just becomes, oh, we're gonna go to a show that a bird man is taking us to, where um a lady on stage lays an egg and that's erotic, and it just keeps going through weirder and weirder shit like that. Yeah. I don't know if I could watch that. I, think, I would absolutely watch what I have on screen. Uh, yeah. Nathan has put on the trailer for the World Ends With You anime. It looks fucking awesome. Because well, it's faithful to the art style. Yeah. Yeah. And the game's already great. Oh, it's just in a situation on where it's like, it was meant for the DS, but it deserves better than that. It was and meant so for the DS. they keep trying to port it to they, things. They and, put it on the Switch, and it was not a good port. Well, it's like, they did what they ha- they could. Like, there's not much they could have done. They did a lot to it yeah. to try to make it work better, and it does. Ew, Funimation. <laughs> Fuck you. Ew. Make a fuck... If their website just, like, ran better and was usable... I'd fucking pay... Actually, I still can't... I wouldn't cancel the service. I need to, though, because I can't afford to keep paying for this shit. Yeah, especially because it's Garbo. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing good on there. I don't, like... I actually yeah, got exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Fucking Dragon Ball, fucking One Piece, fucking Naruto, all that shit sucks. Naruto's not on Funimation. It certainly is. No, it's not. It's Boruto. on Crunchyroll. Boruto's on in, in Funimation. No. V- Bo- Naruto is Viz. I thought most of the Viz ones are on Funimation. I don't know. Um, let me go. Okay. I hate it when things hide X's. Like, you know, you go fucking look for uh, You get an ad and they're like, where's the X? <laughs> oh, it's in the top right. No, it's in the top left this time. Or the, uh, oh, what was it? I think it was on fucking Funimation and they had an X in the corner and I went to press it <laughs> and that was a hidden X. <laughs> It was like one of those where it's like the X is there, but you press it and it takes you to the next fucking website. Ugh. It's like, and then the actual X pops up over it. You fucking assholes. It sucks. Yeah. Remember when everyone on Funimation was getting canceled? That was cool. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Connor. Four. Um. 
Well, anyways. What, are we ta- what do you want to talk about? I'm just thinking if there's any more news or we should just move on. Uh, a trailer came out for an American Pickle. What the fuck is that? That's the Seth Rogen HBO films. Does he turn himself into a pickle? No. Funny shit I've ever seen. <laughs> no, I've it's... seen a new version of that meme, actually. What is it? Do you remember Vine? I remember Vine. Uh, do, you, do you remember King Batch? I remember King Batch, yeah. He had, it was like the, I think it was his first Vine that like really popped off. Where someone, where he's like, hey man, can I get some ice cream? He's like, yeah, just one spoonful though. And then he does like this face where he's like, mm, I got you. And he pulls out a giant, like a comically large spoon. So it's people doing like the pickle Rick where it's like, and then he turned himself into a pickle. Funniest shit I've ever seen. But they've just changed it to, and then he pulled out a comically large spoon. Funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so an American pickle. I'm just gonna silently put on the trailer for Ian. We've evolved. We've evolved to Nathan turning his computer on because of our tech support issues. <laughs> yep. So. Yeah, we're still recording, right? You gotta check yes, this shit out. We are now. still recording. 27 minutes into the podcast. What 37, was the... 37. 37. I can't read. Alright, so we're almost. We got eight more minutes and then we're caught back up. Nice. Um, honestly, I feel like I need audio for this. Okay. Is he digging a tr- Is he making a fence? Oh, he got married. He's Jewish. Just yeah. like real life. Yeah. Hold on. Let's unmute. Let's, let's just turn. We're just going to have a live watch of this trailer because we fucking ran out of things. I don't know. I actually did stuff this week. No fucking way. Does... A hundred years later. Oh, okay. All right. So he got pickled. Oh, did, was she pregnant when he turned into a pickle? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. It's Seth Rogen playing him, like himself. Against himself, yeah. <laughs> so this is an HBO Max movie? Yeah, HBO movie. Oh, wait. What time did he get frozen? A hundred or- years ago. So in 2020? In 1990. 1920. He missed a whole world war. Yeah. He's coming back and he's like, yo, where? what happened to all my people? Ba- what happened to all my family back in Poland? Yeah. <laughs> From the producers of... The Disaster Artist in 5050. So, Seth Rogen. <laughs> and Evan Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> Seth Rogen and Seth Rogen... <laughs> <laughs> he actually doesn't look like old Seth Rogen doesn't look like young Seth Rogen. Yeah, they did well. Yeah. Uh, they definitely did like some... You know what? You know what I bet they did? I bet that's just Seth Rogen without makeup on. Because, like, you know, you see a movie, every character yeah. has of like their makeup done to accentuate their features. So that Seth Rogen, the young one, it's how we recognize him. Yeah. But the old one... No, I I think it's I think it's kind of the other way around. It's like we're so used to big beardy Seth Rogen that the just, younger ones just shave. <laughs> big like, beer, big beardy Seth Rogen on Twitter with the eyes wide, going, "I made some more clay. I'm about to smoke some weed and ash in it." Yeah, I made a fucking another ashtray. <laughs> fuck, just texted me. Oh, Connor. Yes, we drinking. What the fuck are we children? <laughs> Nathan's not, but you know. Yeah. Nathan doesn't Yo, let alcoholism yeah. grip his life like the rest. Like I'll me. drink when they start selling the fucking hard Arizonas near here and they stop being sold out. What do you mean? Did you not hear about that? Hard Arizona. Like, is it an actual okay. Arizona thing? Uh, yeah, Arizona's put out this official, it's a hard green tea. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pr- just probably oh, and you actually like the green tea it. ones. I like the green tea. That's my favorite one. So, like... Bro, my eyes been hurting. Yeah? I think I'm just dehydrated a lot. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, so then they put out also like wake that. up every day like shit. <laughs> Not because of drinking. This was during the week as well. <laughs> when I was at work. I think it's just the water. I think I'm just not drinking enough water. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah. I got a headache right now, actually. It just started. Uh that's you know what you talk about your hard green tea. I'm just gonna put, go pour myself a glass. Oh yeah. Uh I was like, okay, so it's just it's like a green tea with vodka in it. That's cool. <laughs> and they sell it at L C V O and it's Getting completely uh, sold out anywhere near me because it's the kind of thing that everybody would at least try once. It's a classic White Claw situation. Well, because everyone was like, man, White Claws are cool. If only there was more taste to them. 
I hey man, the claw is sick. White claw's all right. It's good. I don't hate it. I prefer getting like a cottage springs if I'm gonna get a vodka soda in a can sort of thing. Yeah, well, white claw. It's not vodka soda. It's literally just like it's a seltzer drink. It's an alcoholic seltzer drink. Yeah, but, but it's, it's a like, vodka soda. You, you, you might as well just say it's a vodka soda. They it's taste almost a, remarkably the same. But I think cottage. If you're, it's one, a little bit different. But um, what's vod- good about what's good about White Claw is that it's like actually like not super, not as bad for you as like even a vodka soda. Vodka sodas have nothing in them. Yeah, and White Claws have even less. That's impossible. I'm going to look up the nutritional information for vodka sodas now. So is it like, do you think they're just not ordering enough or do you think there's just too many people going for them immediately? Yeah, it could be a little bit Because the both. thing with White Claw, it was like, they sold out. They didn't out. order enough, yeah. They, no, they, but they also ordered more than they did, more than they do of anything else. Yeah. I think it's just everybody wanted it, yeah. Um, okay, White Claw. It's, it's inherently something people want. Nutritional uh, facts. But do you want to jump right into the weeks after this? Yeah. Okay. I actually did the stuff this week for once. <gasps> Me too. Okay, so uh, okay, so a white claw of a uh, 355 milliliter can. Okay, which is not the ones we usually drink. Isn't it a 355 milliliter the tall boy? No, wait. 473. Oh, this is the same size. Oh, uh, yeah. this is not a tall boy. This is a Boomer Juice Monster Energy. Um, yeah. So white claws either have a 70 to 100 calories, which is honestly exactly the same. As a vodka it's the soda. same as a vodka soda? Yeah. Vodka, right. well, if you make, the vodka I use has zero calories. <laughs> like because oh, you, you have skinny bitch vodka? No, I have Tag. It's a local one, and it's just really good. Okay. Um. Then I have I, uh, the... Club soda? Club soda, zero, as well. Mm. It's literally just the bit of lime juice I put in. Right. And that's not even enough to even quantify. So I would say, when I make them by hand, like with the, my shit... Yeah. Less. When I go and if buy go a bar, like a buy cottage, a canned one. if I buy a cottage springs vodka soda, then it has like a hundred calories. Okay, but if you're counting cal, if you if you need to be concerned about the hundred calorie vodka soda you just had, you have other issues. Well, Ian, if I'm gonna drink fifteen vodka sodas in a night, uh, fifteen hundred calories. Yeah, that's too many. Yeah, don't drink fifteen then. If you're drinking fifteen, hey, you're Ian. fucking dying. What? Listen to your own advice. I don't drink 15 vodka sodas. No, I drink 24 beers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. That's worse. Whose house was I at last where I accidentally... Oh, my own house. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. No, we were at Derek's. Yeah. And we fucking, like... One, yeah, you I, went I, Blake and Megan showed up. And yeah. then we went to... They came back to my house. And me and Blake obviously drank till 8 a.m. <laughs> and I drank, like, all of my beer I had at home. Great. Yeah. Blake literally brings the worst out of me. He fucking, he, he messaged me on Thursday. He's like, you doing anything on Friday? And I'm like, no. He's like, you want to come to Acton to see Connor? Other Connor? Yeah. And I was like, <sighs> Acton. I know I said I had nothing to do on Friday. But, like. But I actually do. <laughs> Acton. <laughs> well, no, it's like if I actually had the full day off. But here's the thing: no one in my house can barbecue properly, mm-hmm. and my mom had a bar like a Canada Day barbecue for all her friends yesterday, and they need someone to make. You the mean steaks. on Wednesday? No, no, yesterday. On Friday? Because Canada Day for a lot Canada of people. Day was Wednesday. Yes, I know, but for I had yesterday off. For a lot of people who are in union jobs and other factory jobs and shit, yeah. pretty much everyone, not in the grocery store, not in a bank. Mm-hmm. Um, would just get the Friday off. You just get the Friday off, and I think that should be how all holidays are. Yeah. Just give me the fucking Friday. Give me the off. long weekend. Give me the Friday or the Monday. Yeah, make like, it a long weekend. Like, and they do well. Like that's how it. Ha- like I think uh, what's other days we get off? Not Remembrance Day. The other one. Some it depends on where you work. You might get Remembrance Day off. Yeah, banks. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, Labor Day, you get off, but that's always a Monday. Yeah, Labor Day. Uh, In Canada, Thanksgiving is always on Monday. Family Day is always a Monday. Yeah. Because Family Day is not a specific day. May 2-4. May 2-4. Even though... See, that's the the fucking thing. May 2-4. You just wind up getting the closest long weekend. Yeah. You get the closest Friday... No, closest Monday. Yeah. So you could even get it a full fucking, like, six days later. You can get it on the 30th. 
Sometimes they'll give you a four day weekend. It has to. It's like the first Monday after um, after May two four. Uh, yeah, after the twenty fourth. So we got May it on tw- the twenty fifth. Twenty fourth is uh, is a uh, Victoria Day. Yeah, but we. But honestly, no one cares. Everybody just calls it May. It's two May two four. <laughs> Because it's because col- can, okay. Because number one, also because Canadian collo- colloquialisms, we call a twenty-four pack of beer a two-four, and they are very common here. Yeah. I have been to America. They not a lot have twenty-four packs. They have them, but like rarely. I went to this grocery store, and of course they had their own. It was a nicer grocery store. They had their own beer fridge instead of it being like a line, a lane. Yeah, which is normally what it has. Walmart's do not have two-four. Wait, they do, but they're only the cans, no yeah. bottles. Uh. Sometimes bottles, but this time it was only cans at the Walmart. Obviously, it's different. I've only bought drinks in Ohio. I was underage when I was in um, Colorado. Yeah. So you go. I went in there and I'm looking, and it's six packs, eight packs. That's it. And I was like, "There's no fuck. I'm gonna have to buy fucking like three eight packs or four. Honestly, or six packs. whenever I boo- buy booze in the states, I go to a liquor store. There wasn't any nearby. It was all oh. grocery stores. We were. I was in Cleveland Heights, which oh, disgusting. <laughs> I don't know. It's a pretty nice. I'm just place. kidding, Ohio folks. I think it was Cleveland Heights. Stevie messaged me if I'm wrong. I wasn't Stevie's place. I was at. It was our other friends. Yeah, my third friend named Connor, <laughs> um, and Ben. So I'm glad Stevie still listens to this podcast. <laughs> he's got to do so. He, it's, he, it's his the, job allows him to keep his fucking headphones in, even though I'm sorry, Stevie. OSHA probably should not let you. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you after I think the only reason he listens to the podcast is because like when he listens to my favorite murder or whatever like they don't say (laughs) they don't like they don't go like isn't that right Stevie (laughs) like just call him out and know that he's listening (laughs) like he kind of gets to interact yeah it's gonna be really funny uh, when the day uh, he when messes- the world stops ending, and then we get, finally get to do the thing where I go go with you to the con- Ohio convention thing that yeah. we, you wind up going to. Because Stevie is somebody whose name I know. I don't know what his face looks like. I don't know what his voice sounds like. Mm-hmm. He knows exactly what I look like and sound like, I- and he knows who I am more than I know who he is. Because <laughs> I'm just like I when Ian says something about you, Stevie, I'm just like, yeah, man. And just pretend that I know more. I I don't. I just I just dogpile on whatever Ian says. Uh, yeah. I would say I th- I treat you exactly the same way I treat Stevie. Like shit. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. No, that's the meme. Is that I mean to Stevie? Yeah. No. I try not to be. It just happens so easily sometimes. Well, it's just it's just being friends. No, but we it's talk like, shit about every one of our friends in this podcast. Oh yeah, obviously. Fuck um, you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Chris. You piece of shit. You think The Last of Us Two is good? <laughs> yeah, Chris. Oh, fuck. listen to this episode. Do you know? Do you follow? Do you watch McCaskis on YouTube? Uh, uh, sorry, McCaskis. No. Okay, he put out a video uh, called. It's a five minute video. <laughs> yeah. It says the real horrible problem with The Last of Us Two. This is a five minute video. <laughs> okay. Where he keeps where he goes like. You know, I've been playing... The, he's a very monotone guy. He's like, I've been playing The Last of Us 2. It's a very good game. It's beautiful. It's amazing. But there's just one glaring issue that makes the whole game make no fucking sense. And that is... But you know what? It's so beautiful how Seattle looks and, like, you get to go through a dilapidated world. And he just keeps, like, complimenting the game. And at the very end of the video, he's just like... Anyways, since there's two pregnant people in the game, they're clearly not the last of them because they're still getting more born. So anyways, they should probably change the name of the game. Anyways, <laughs> 9 out of 10. <laughs> and I fucking said Chris that video with like this paragraph saying, this will prove you wrong. You'll finally realize what we're all seeing about why this game's fucking shit. <laughs> and you'll feel like a fool for ever thinking it was good. And he texts me back five minutes later. He's like, I want that five minutes of my life back. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love me cast because he's funny. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, uh, this week, uh, I sort of have gotten a lot of movie watching done and just enjoying things. Done. I watched one movie and one documentary. Well, start with a movie. Go. Uh, well, you want me to go first? Yeah. All right. I watched My Neighbor Totoro. <gasps> the movie's so good. It's all right. It's. <laughs> it got, I, think, I, I, I think recognize it's how it's too hyped like, up for you. Then uh, no, yeah, it's like it's. Honestly, I've liked the Ghibli movies more, where people were like, "Wow, that was not great." Like uh, fucking Howl's Moving Castle. 
Do people say Howl's Movie Castle isn't good? One guy in my Discord does. Is it Stevie? <laughs> no, it's not. It's Gavin. <laughs> You're lucky, Stevie. Stevie, You're fucking lucky Stevie's not that a weeb. You like that movie, Stevie, Stevie. Stevie's not a weeb. I think the most he's watched like a couple episodes of Golden Boy and like a couple episodes of Cowboy Bebop. And only when I was there four years ago. <laughs> Uh, well, Stevie, if you want to watch a, an anime, I would I would highly recommend. Wait, maybe he watched My Never Totoro with us. I w- we watched it over stream. I was I would, streaming it. I would recommend of- watching uh, Castle of Cagliostro, which is like an uh, uh, a Miyazaki movie that people don't usually talk about. Here's the fucking thing. That's actually the one Gavin really likes. Oh yeah, <laughs> is we were great. we we were looking because uh, Canadian Netflix. Yeah, they dropped a bunch of Ghibli movies. They on did. It. They did. Yeah, it's awesome. And also in a couple more that because are, they all dropped on HBO Max in America, but we don't have that here. <coughs> Which is weird because they're Disney owns the distribution rights, so why not just put them on? No, Disney, Disney doesn't own the dis- distribution rights anymore. Oh, uh, Miramax had them for a long time. Right? It was no, it was Miramax. Miramax is owned by Disney, so they went to Disney and then. Uh, in like 2013, the Ghibli movies moved over to G Kids, which was essentially like a brand new label that celebrates like sort of more independent animation. But they also got Ghibli, like Ghibli Kids. <laughs> yeah, I think they were basically made to do that. Okay, so, um, they dropped all the movies, so we were like looking through. We were bored, and we're just like, let's watch a movie. So we just threw on. Uh, I, I was looking through them, and they were like. I added them all to my list. Yeah. So I didn't have to keep looking for them. So Cagliostro, Mononoke. Yeah, so I fucking looked through them and I was like, oh, we were like trying to pick one to watch and Gavin's watched all of them. So I was like, which one do you think I should watch? And he's like, um, and I was I was saying, I don't think I've seen any of these. And he's like, Ian, you watched Castle of Cagliostro with us. <laughs> you watched Castle of Cagliostro with me and Emma. Then maybe that's who I watched it with then. <laughs> I've watched it multiple times. I've watched the loop in the third one. That's the loop in the third one. It's Ian. the other one, the Castle in the Sky. <laughs> a Castle in the Sky isn't loop in the third. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, is I've watched. I, I'm confusing them. Castle of Cagliostro. I watched with you and Emma. Yeah, and then Castle, uh, in, the Castle sky. in the Sky. I watched with them. Yeah, Castle in the Sky is great too. But the thing with um, Mark Hamill's great. Okay, so the thing with my neighbor Totoro. Yeah. Not a lot happens. It's a much more chill movie. It's yeah. a very chill... Like, though, there's no stakes. It's literally... It's about two young girls not... Who have a... Con- who understand the concept of death. Yeah. Because they... You know, I think that in other cultures, they just learned about it a lot faster, like, yeah. earlier. Um, And it's not, like, a thing... Like, you know what's going to happen to everyone. Yeah. But it's, like, you don't want it to happen to people you know. Like, they, they're, their mom's sick in the hospital with something bad. Yeah. And they moved to be... Uh, to, like, out closer to the country, there, right? Yeah, her dad's like a teacher at like a university nearby, mm. and they're just both like living in this town, and then they're like, it's just kind of showing their life in the town, what's going on. It's like a less spooky Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, well, they, and they meet up with, they fun, meet, the younger one meets Totoro, and he's just this nice, big... Boy. Bunny bear. <laughs> he's a good boy. He's a various creature. Yeah, and there's and, a cat bus. Yeah, uh, and the cat bus is beautifully animated. <laughs> That, yeah, I mean, like, Totoro, I think Totoro gets hyped up because everybody just likes it, and it's, like, got Totoro in it. It's, it's just like an really, iconic character. It's just but, really cute. There's, like, no yeah. stakes. Yeah. Like, there's nothing, like, if the move, if those girls didn't, if if the younger one didn't run away trying kinda to like, get to the hospital, like nothing movie. would have happened. Yeah. Like, there's nothing goes on in this movie. There's no stakes. Totoro's a good guy. They just see cute things, and it's, like... Japanese mythology mysticism shit. Yeah, I think Spirited Away is the same type of movie, but it's a bit Spirited more Away has more stakes. Yeah, it's like it's got it's the same kind of movie where it's like a it's like a let's see this thing yeah. type movie, but it's more active and there's stakes to it. Mm-hmm. But um, that doesn't mean Totoro is a worse or better movie. Than no, I was just saying Spirited it's Away. it's not as entertaining it's not me. super ex- it's not exciting but like you liked kiki's delivery service and it's the same kind of yeah thing. i remember when you picked me up that one time yeah right after i watched it i was like man that movie was shit and then as i'm explaining i'm like oh wait really it's good. great no yeah because because uh, i when i watched it i was like kind of sitting there like whatever but it's a story about a girl who like she, as she's growing up she starts to lose the interest in the things she had and she even like gets so bummed out she can't go back to that stuff and she has to find a new appreciation for it and it's like yeah mm-hmm. it's a really good movie and it's fun and it's cute, and yeah. the world is awesome. Like it looks yeah. really nice, but it's just it didn't grab me. I'm sure if I was like a fucking fourteen year old girl watching that, I would probably lose my mind. 
Yeah. Because it's like, this movie's for me. This is about me and how I can't appreciate my old bullshit anymore. Also, I think I'm like one of the few people who like uh, When Marnie Was There. Haven't seen it. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, so I like When Marnie Was There. It's definitely weird mm-hmm. um, what happens at the end of that movie. But it is a very sweet, beautiful movie. Mm. Um, but yeah, weird. <laughs> it's... Well, keep it to yourself because I am going to watch it. All right. <laughs> it's like it's gay until it's like, just kidding. Well, because they can't be gay. They're kids. No, it's like, it's not It's not the kind of twist you'd expect from the they're gay. Okay. It's, it's a, uh, it's, yeah. It, when Marnie Was There is really good. And I think ultimately, like, compared to a lot of the other Get Bleeped movies, the, the magic in When Marnie Was There is like, it's like, I can't, I think it's like kind of the most grounded. Like, mm-hmm. it takes place in pretty much the real world except for X thing exists. And it's, like, kind of questionable if it even exists. Like, you could make an argument that it was, like, all imagined. Um, so what'd you watch? Okay, so uh, I managed to watch not one, but two Marvel movies this week. Jesus Christ, Nathan. You didn't watch movies, you watched TV shows. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's funny. I was saying to my mom, I was like, you know, I didn't know how much like, uh, like I miss seeing these every once in a while. Well, because for a good portion of our lives at this point, yeah, for it's twelve solid, years, twelve years, for yeah, for twelve, no, no, eleven. Well, they, they skipped two thousand nine. Yeah. Also, we haven't, we didn't get any movies this year, In like this Marvel year, movies. Yeah. yeah. So for eleven years, for, yeah, eleven or ten years, we have been getting. Marvel movies once or twice a year. Yeah, or and sometimes thrice. Yeah, and again, honest- 2017 proves that that was. Do you know what proves that 2017 was one of the best years? Period. Yeah. Um, 2017. Not only did all of the great things that I've said that happened in 2017 happen, the three probably best Marvel movies, or three three of the top five, came mm-hmm. out in 2017. Cool. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. We've gone over this. I don't like that one that much. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah, that's a good one. I really like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I think you need to watch it a second time. No, I don't. Are you sure? (laughs) I I remember the whole movie. I I remember the whole movie and I'm like, this movie's great. It's all about toxic masculinity. I feel like they really wanted it to be quotable. But no, let's not get into this. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll rewatch it. I do want to do like a big like rewatch. Maybe I'll lo- when I lose my job, I'll just go fucking rewatch all the movies. Yeah, I can- I'll do that with you. No, yeah, sure. We'll we can make a unplug- podcast about it. Well, uh, video, not a podcast. A video about it. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Just uh, two white dudes talking about Marvel. No one's fucking done that for it. So what was the two you watched the- this week? Okay, so I watched Thor Ragnarok. The best one. The best Marvel movie. Yeah. And uh, I will- for the second time, for the first time since the theater, Far From Home. How'd you feel about Far From Home second time? Fucking still great. Good. I g- glad you still have that opinion. How I still don't like the end. I do. Where they reveal that he's more who he is. Cause I always like the idea of the thing about everyone knows who all the event like all these characters are. Yeah. They know Bruce Banner's the Hulk. They know Tony Stark's Iron Man. But then Spider Man was always supposed to be this hidden dude. You well, didn't, weren't supposed to know who Spider Man was. He's the most covered up. And uh, so let me let me say how I feel in different ways. For me personally, I like secret identities and superhero stories. In general, mm-hmm. I like them. But the MCU from Iron Man 1 has decided fuck the concept of secret identities. But that's why it was more special that Spider-Man was still a so secret identity. It was, but the issue is that from Spider-Man appearing in Infinity War and Endgame, he's become a much bigger hero than he has. And I think the concept of the movie being that Spider-Man has to rise up to be the next generation, of, to lead the next generation of heroes, along with the fact that... Because the way this works is like, they didn't really, in a Homecoming, get to have Spider-Man threat or menace situation, right? Like like the the reporting, the you know the, the fact that people hate Spider-Man was never a thing that's been done. And so their way to do that is to have the fake news element of it. To make him think to make everyone think that he was a murderer. Yeah. Yeah. And and the the reveal of 
Peter Parker being Spider-Man just makes sense. He's shown his face to too many people at this point. Yeah. I just... I think, like, him being our... Uh, fuck. <laughs> so I... <laughs> Gotta stop reading text messages as I'm speaking, because it just fucks yeah. up my whole speech pattern. You, you forget what you're gonna say. I think the, like, the point of Far From Home is to make him, like, a more... Like, to be Spider-Man where he's all quippy and shit, but then also, like, to have the serious Spider-Man point. Yeah. Where he was like, I'm fucking tired of Mysterio. He's played me, like, multiple times. I'm fucked. I just gotta grow up right now. Like, shit. Or, yeah. Like, he's just moving on. Like, he goes forward. And then when Mysterio's still lying to him, and he can just fucking tell, and he, like... Just, grabs the gun. Yeah. Yeah. He it, grabs the gun as it goes off and, like, fucking yeah. beats the shit out of him. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, but like it, the thing, the thing that I feel about it is in terms of me as somebody who likes Spider-Man for certain reasons, I would prefer the secret identity thing, but also Fucking I think as a concept for where do we go from here, this opens up an interesting yeah. realm that we can go I, to. Like, I didn't want to like spoil for people that yeah. Mysterio is obviously going to be the villain. Yeah. Because I'm not even that big into Spider-Man. I've only watched the movies and played the movie games. Yeah. Like, I'm very... Uh, and I've watched the TV show not regularly whenever it was on. Yeah, the the, the 90s cartoon, I'm guessing. I don't fucking remember. Whichever one. Oh, well, you know Spider what? Butt. The fucking Spider super butt. old one that was on, like, really late on Teletoon. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. That one? Where all the memes came from. Okay. Yeah. I... But I, I've there's no known... memes from the Spider Blood Spider Man, but that's the best one. Uh, I know. I like. Sorry, it's not the best one. I uh, I've always known that Mysterio was a villain. Yeah. So when they showed him off, I was, and people were like, "Are they gonna do a heel turn with Mysterio and make him a good guy?" It's like, no, <laughs> obviously not. Well, that's a face imagine turn. a heel turn is when you turn. Fuck down. yeah, but like. Imagine if they actually was just like, oh, Mysterio's a good guy now, and also he actually has magic powers. I'd be like, that's so fucking stupid. Well, it's funny, though. The way they the way they do that movie, though, uh, what I love is that the elementals, they consistently reference as being characters with those elemental powers from the comics. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, even down to, like, you know how there's always, like, the little comic book Easter eggs, like, where it's like, oh, and the license plate has this one, right? Yeah. I was watching a thing where it's like, the license plate thing is there in Far From Home to continue to trick you. Because in the beginning where they fight the guy who's, like, made of dirt, the license plate is from the first appearance of Sandman. Mm -hmm. When they fight the the metal guy or the, the fire guy... It's the license plates that you see are from the first appearance of Molten Man. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Hydro Man reference where they literally say like, oh, somebody, this sailor guy was like this. And it's this character's name. And I'm like, that's that's cool that they're like still consistently like Mysterio made the license plates references to those comic books yeah. in that sense where it's still tricking the audience. But yeah, if you didn't see the, that Mysterio was the bad guy, you're kind of a fool. Yeah. It's like, but then again... People went to see the Winter Soldier and didn't realize it was Bucky. Oh, yeah. like Well, I didn't know that, actually, but I'm really? not a Captain America fan. Captain America was so off my radar. So I I didn't read the Winter Soldier, but I knew of it. Like, it's a famous comic book. Didn't like, know it at all. I do, Before the actual Marvel movie started, I probably would have said I liked DC more. I would still say that. I wouldn't because I think DC is... I think DC's movies suck, but their comics are still way better than Marvel comics. I Well, here's the thing. DC has gone with through too many reboots and I have nowhere to start anymore. <laughs> I tried to read Batman for a while. Yeah. And I was like, eh, whatever, I don't care. And then I tried to read Batgirl and Batgirl sucks. <laughs> it's good and then it's bad. Like... Uh... <laughs> The Gail Simone one? I don't know. Whichever one was in New 52. That's Gail Simone's. And then it's I, really good. Well, I was reading it, and you know, I told you they did it before. They were doing Court of Owls. Yeah. And then the, it was like a whole thing where Batgirl was like very much in it. And then I had to go and find the Batman ones to read, or else I didn't get to fucking read the So thing. that's just you having crossover fatigue. This is No, this is me going, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Have don't have fucking don't make me be like go buy the Batgirl one to go and then you go read a different character story. Just have it all in one fucking line. They're never gonna do that. They make more money doing. I it the know, other way. but that's the fucking thing. Like that's why I like anime and shit more. Like yeah. One Piece. Just one fucking One Piece. How do you? Where do you want to start with One Piece? There's nine hundred chapter chapters. One. Chapter one. Yeah, that's um, it. That's where I should have known that Katara was fucked up. Actually. 
<laughs> because he was tweeting about his love for One Piece, but he skipped the first 200 episodes <gasps> and he skipped other uh, like arcs. Nathan, some of the best episodes of One Piece are in those first 200 episodes. Don't do that to me. Oh, no. He skipped the first 200 episodes. Look, in, in a show where, like, uh, there's multi- there's massive callbacks all the time. Yeah, I get it. You kind of need to watch all of it. Um, But, like, so, like, just... If you're going to f- put out just a fucking, like, a book, a big book, charge, like, the cost of, like, three of the books, and just put out multiple stories, like, it's a Shonen Jump, but for Batman, where it's like, this is the Batman part, 20 pages of Batman, then 20 pages of Batgirl, and then, like, 20 pages of fucking uh, Dick Grayson, <laughs> or whatever so, the fuck his story was called. Nightwing? Yeah. Or whatever Bat family they're doing. So you... Okay. So here's the, the situation with comics. It's crossovers especially the new 52 was just bad for that like yeah like because they had all these stories going but then all of them like, like inherently connected into one and inherently then. obviously like batgirl is going what happens to batman is going to affect batgirl in some way or another yeah because they live in the same city yeah but like you know you should be able to read the one without having to read the other but reading both is going to make give you more context that's what it should be but instead what it is is like they both are completely separate and then they'll be like, we're going to do a big thing happen so that everybody's got to be here. And usually they'll make collected versions of the entire event. So like for Night of the Owls, you can buy an entire book that's every Night of the Owls But that's after crossover. it's over. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'd rather would have, you know, read it as it was happening. Yeah. Because then I, it can be a discussion. If one of my other friends is reading it, I could do it instead of if you were reading it. Yeah. And then I was like, oh man, I talked to you about it, but Don't I have to wait read, a full fucking year for fucking Batman to come do out. Do not read comic books as they come out. That's stupid. Let's Don't. just fucking adopt I did for a Japan's while. Mo- fucking model with this shit. Yeah, but I did for a while, but like it's Let's too hard. Do monthly fuck do a shonen jump, do it monthly. Put the DC, put all your comics into one charge you like 40 bucks for the whole fucking book yeah and, and then do volumes as well yeah of the individual books that uh, yeah but in terms of dc what i like about dc is there's so many dc stories that just work on their own mm-hmm. like year one like year one's perfect it's just yeah it's, it's a good just movie as well <laughs> it's a good movie yeah. yeah um yeah if you like year one by the way you should read uh long halloween and dark victory who knows? I'm not in a comic book reading mood. <laughs> okay. I just read manga. Yeah. Uh, but those things are good. Uh, mm. I think just inherently DC Comics is is just a more interesting DC, world with more comics interesting characters. are better. Yeah. Because Marvel Comics See, does the crossover thing Dean so Kane much. Said? <laughs> yeah, Dean Cain sucks and yeah, is an idiot. Yeah. Oh, God, truth, justice in the American way. He, I can't say that anymore. It's like, oh, really? The fucking illegal alien from space can't yeah. say truth, justice in the American way? Yeah. Uh, well, the the thing I saw that I thought was really funny is... I think uh, whatever you saw, I saw. Oh, yeah. Well, I, tweeted, I reblogged that. It's yeah. like... Or retweeted that, rather, where somebody was like, it's an illegal immigrant about all, you know, the whole thing that Superman is. Like, he can say what he wants. Uh, Dean Kane, you're just an idiot. Um, oh, you know what's a news thing I forgot, actually? What's a news thing you forgot? Laura Bailey's getting death threats. That sucks. Everybody who's sending death threats. Don't Who's send it? death threats to people, period. Don't play fucking... Don't send death threats to actors, you piece of shit. Or any... Or anybody. She did a job. She didn't have a... Send the death threats to Neil Druckmann. Don't send death threats <laughs> to Neil Don't do Druckmann. that. <laughs> don't send death, thre- death threats to anybody that you don't like, except Jeff Bezos. If you don't like something, use your money as your threat. Just don't buy it. Yeah, or give it That's a bad all. review, or tweet that the game's bad. Nobody's gonna give you give a shit if you buy the game and don't like it, and tweet, tweet that the, it's bad. Tweet the game's bad that don't follow up the tweet with saying I want to slit Laura Bailey's neck. Like, yeah, it's Laura stupid. Bailey is not in control of what she does, and what she gets paid to do. She's an actress. Well, she could say no to a role. She can re- refuse a role, but like, yeah, she does. She play Abby or Dina? She's uh, she's Abby. Uh, Ashley Burch, I think, is Dina. Okay, and maybe I got it backwards. Maybe. I'm just going to look it up. Okay. But, like, either way, who fucking cares? Like, she took a job because she worked with the people who made the thing before. Yeah. And had a good time. Also. And got good, did, did a good performance. Her, She's married to Travis Willingham, and, and you should be nice. 
Yeah, man. Like, I don't know. Just don't send people death threats for fucking making a thing you don't like. Yeah. Like, they didn't... They like, not done anything wrong. They didn't make fucking Birth of a Nation. They made a, a poopy video game. Like, it doesn't deserve this level of hate. Yeah. Ooh, damn, she was Catwoman. Laura Bailey's actually been, like, really popping off. Like she she's always, always has been. But, no, she was, like, did a lot of anime stuff. Yeah. And then now it's she just, like... She was in Persona 4... Uh, she, was, she was Trunks in uh, Dragon Ball Z. You can't yeah. Trunks. She's she's Seathrin and Catherine. Um, she's Maka and Soul Born, Soul Eater. She's Lust and Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Some bitch from Fruits Basket. <laughs> Fruits Baskets are supposed to be good. She's Shin from Shin Chan. I don't know. I, I think that the remake. I've heard that the remake is much better. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then in the more recent years, she's been like, she's like the Troy Baker, like the female, actually, Ashley Birch is like female Troy Baker. Uh, no, I'd say Laura Bailey. I'd say they are on the same level. One of them is Nolan North, the other one's Troy Baker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Laura Bailey, I mean, it's so funny though to see, uh, who's playing the Avengers in the video game because they're essentially the equivalent of those actors. <laughs> For the fucking video game yeah. voice actors, because she's she's uh isn't she Natasha? Black cat. Yeah, she's Black Widow. Oh yeah, she's Black Widow. She's Black Widow. Troy Baker is uh, Bruce Banner, which is an odd choice. Uh, You're right. That is. I would. Feel, I would say Nolan North is Iron Man, which is yeah. Yeah. Okay. I it, either Troy Baker or Nolan North would be Iron Man. <laughs> Nolan North is more of an Iron Man because Iron Man's yeah. like a cocky sort of asshole character. I would have. I would have. Even chunky. though it's a bit of a a bit of an insult to some people, I would have said Troy Baker would be great at playing Hawkeye. Because he's deaf. <laughs> 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 no, because everybody thinks Hawkeye sucks. Hawkeye's great. I think yeah, but I Jeremy like Renner Baker, sucks. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy Renner sucks. Yeah, Jeremy uh, Renner is a piece of shit. I feel like Troy Baker, though, like, I think he's a funny enough guy that he could play down on oh, his Oh, she was Gwen Stacy, Black Widow, and Crimson Dynamo in Spider Man uh, and the animation. Like the one from 2017. That's Oh, Marvel's Spider Man, where it's, uh, it's Yusuke or y- Yosuke as Spider Man? No, not the not the video game. Oh, you mean the, the one where cartoon. it's a catchy as Spider Man? Oh, really? Yeah. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, it's a catchy. Ah, uh, you know I'm gonna send that man to death threats. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, apparently he's good, but it was retitled as Spider Man Maximum Venom for its third season. Oh, I get that reference to Maximum Carnage, except Maximum Carnage makes sense. <laughs> And Um, then Maximum Carnage turned into Maximum Clonage, and it's the worst thing that happened to (laughs) Spider-Man. Except for One More Day, which is worse. Yeah. One More Day sucks. Um, Okay, finally, fuck, give me video games, god damn! Okay, finally hit video games on Laura Bailey's thing. Yeah. Um. Chun-Li in Super Street Fighter 4. Hell yeah. Kane and Nier. Uh, Kaine? Whatever. Yeah, she's great as Kaine, by the way. She's she fucking fantastic. She plays the cat in Sonic Colors, but only in the Nintendo DS version. What? <laughs> she's Catherine with a C in Catherine. I said that already. Just plays the cat in Sonic Generations. <laughs> also, Omo Chow. Oh, yeah, she's female voice number one from Saints Row the Third. Yeah. Where male voice number one was Troy Baker. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, what the fuck were we talking about? <laughs> Don't send people death threats. Yeah, please don't. Especially... I mean, no, you know what? Just don't. She's Helena Harper from Resident Evil 6. Yeah. Arguably her best role. <laughs> her best role is Kaine, in my opinion. Um, She was various in The Last of Us. She was <laughs> president of the USA in Saints Row 4. Of course. Um. Oh, she was Fetch in Infamous Second Son. Oh, yeah. 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 God, she does some good shit. She's great. Yeah. All right, let's stop. I'm gonna fucking. She was in Uncharted Four, as whatever that character's name is. She was the villain. Yeah. When did Uncharted Four come out? Uh, 2016, 2017, 2016, 2015. Nadine. Oh. Nadine. She yeah. can't do that role anymore because she's not black. I mean, it makes sense. I honestly, at the time, was like, "Is that okay? Do we still do that?" 
I got no issue with it. If, if that's how people want to play it, I don't care. To me, the voice is a voice. I think the funniest one is that they introduced uh, Miracle in full. Uh, I mean, in English, in the English dub for My Hero Academia. I think we talked about this last week. Yeah, actually. we talked about it last yeah. week. Yeah, black woman doesn't sound black enough to be the character. Apparently, you racist. Racist. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I guess to put a cap on that conversation, Spider-Man: Far From Home is quite good. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, we talked about manga for a bit. Oh, fuck. You know what, actually? Oh, yeah. What'd you watch? No, no. I just want to... Um, I really liked him Far From Home. Yeah? Uh, how Jake Gyllenhaal... Is great? Yeah, but like he... I think he outperforms everyone in that fucking movie. Yeah. Because at the beginning of the movie, I feel like he's acting like shit. Yeah. Like his acting sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the point, is he's not an actor. <laughs> yeah, his character's movie. like kind of... So when, he get, when he's like, he gets the glasses, he's like, nailed it! <laughs> Yeah, he's like, and then he actually yeah. becomes Jake Gyllenhaal, the actor. Yeah, who is not like, playing a character anymore. The fucking Mysterio sequence, like the big one, the one where he gets him hit by the train. Yeah, it's also funny as shit. It's funny. <laughs> Any scene where a character gets hit by something coming in real fast from the right. Yeah, from <laughs> where the it's like you're just staring at them like this, and you're just like, like he's like bye bye, and he's like what? Boom. <laughs> but the the way they did that illusion sequence is so good. Like, it's just really good yeah. where you're just flowing through all this crazy shit happening. It's cooler than Doctor Strange. Yeah. I can't wait for the Doctor Strange PG horror movie. <laughs> hey, man, Sam Raimi's doing it. Is he back on it? Sam Raimi's doing it now. He took over from Scott Derrickson. Okay, because I feel like they just kept fucking that movie up. Whatever. Yeah. I'm sure Disney will make some mediocre superhero movie out of it like they always do. Yeah, but it'll still be interesting. It's still called the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. And Sam Raimi is a no known horror director for the Evil Dead I saw movies. Doctor Strange the first time with Kyle. Yeah. And as we're leaving the theater, he's just like, by the way, that's exactly what being on MDMA is like. <laughs> like the part when she like pushes him out of his own body and he goes through all the shit. That's what, wait, that's what being on MDMA is that, like? I think it was MDMA that Kyle said. I thought it, uh, hmm, because that's, that's more of an I don't OSD, know, I would have, I would ask him later, but he's not coming anymore. Oh. Uh, he's, uh, got an allergic reaction from a pillow, don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna ask. I'm not gonna, I just said, damn, that sucks, bro. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Sam Raimi will be good in that Doctor Strange thing. He, yeah, sure. Do you remember in, uh, in... Uh, Spider-Man 2 when they say that Doctor Strange exists in that universe. Do they? Yeah. Hmm. When they're trying to find a name for Doctor Octopus. They're like suggesting names and it's like da, 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 da. Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange. Nah, he's and then J. J. Davis is like perfect <laughs> but it's taken. <laughs> it's... <laughs> okay, that is funny. <laughs> There's a real hard thing like with Spider-Man with yeah. them be, like in the Spider-Man PS4 game. Yeah. They're like, where's the Avengers while the whole while all of New York is being destroyed? Like Tony Stark clearly lives in the city. The Avengers Tower is there. Yeah. And it's just like, where are they? And he's like, oh, who fucking knows. <laughs> yeah. Uh I so because in the PlayStation version of Marvel's Avengers, you get to play you get the uh, additional character of uh Spider-Man PS4, Spider-Man. I think m my assumption is that the the whatever happens in Avengers is happening. During the Miles Morales one? Yeah. So that's why no, Miles they is say, in the city. You know what? They say the Avengers are on the West Coast, and in the trailer for Square Enix Marvel's Avengers games, game, they're shown in San Francisco at the Golden Gate Bridge, mm -hmm. and something happens. So, And then the Avengers are gone, right? So okay. that's probably happening at the same time. So we still need justification for what happens to um, Peter for Miles Morales. Yeah. yeah, I think I don't think they're killing Peter in Spider-Man Miles Morales. I think they'll save that for an actual Marvel Spider-Man two, an actual yeah Marvel Spider-Man two, and then in Spider-Man three you officially play as Miles or something. Yeah, like no, I think I think part way through Spider-Man two you're I gonna, you're gonna have Spidey die. If I play halfway through the game, yeah, and then he becomes Miles. Yeah, and then you play as Miles. If I rest. fucking play whenever Marvel Marvel Spider-Man PS4 PS5 two whatever the fuck comes yeah. out. If I have to, if that game comes out and I'm not already powerful, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah, in in the Miles Morales game, the way I thought that would be a really cool way to just intro the game, just when you start playing, when it was Spider Man Two, by the way, yeah, is like my my big brain thing when I finished Spider Man One was like, here's what you do, 
you'd sell it as your your Peter Parker for the game. You you only show scenes where you're playing as Peter Parker. Even modify some later scenes. <laughs> yeah, where you show you that you're Peter Parker, you know, you do you show some swinging, you show some new plot stuff with that. Yeah. And then what happens right at the start of the game is that Pete and Miles are on top of the roof. This is the first th- scene. You just put the game in, you press go on the story. This is how the game starts. You're Peter and Miles on the roof and Pete's like, "Okay, so here's how you do it when you're web swinging. What you want to do is do the okay, but that seems already happened, unfortunately. So it sort of has, but what I'm saying is like flashback. You, you, no, not necessarily a flashback. It's like he's just like reassuring him how to do it. I guess you could do it. It's Running like, through the base. It's like just make sure you want to do this. You want to make sure to glide with it. You move with it and make sure that you can make gaps. Do that math in your head, okay? And then Miles is like, Pete, I know this. I know this. I'm I'm gonna do fine. And then Peter's like, okay, follow me. I'll lead. And then so then you jump off and you show the camera from behind Peter like you're going to play as Peter. And he's fall, jump off the building and he's falling and he's falling and he's falling and he's falling faster than the camera. Pull back to Miles and then press R2 to swing oh. and then play in <laughs> its own song. Yeah, that would be cool. And you're following Pete. I, I would like them to put... What the fuck? I think they need to put like music in Spider-Man games. Like get some. I know what they already have to pay for all those fucking rights and shit. But yeah. let me get some fucking like... Let me swing around and listen to something. Well, like, that's the thing. In Spider-Man 2 for the PS2, the, the music in that game is butt rocky as hell. Yeah. But then the music in Spider-Man PS4 is just, like, generic orchestral Marvel Action. movie yeah. music. And so then it's, like, it's less cool. But that's the coolest shit But when shit you first about- start the game, it's playing whatever random alt-rock song they've got. And it's, like, you're, like, fuck, yeah. But that's, like, the best part. No, well, yeah, Spider-Man would listen to fucking alt-rock. Yeah. Miles Morales... Yeah, the coolest part that of Spider-Man Kid song is this fuck. Yeah, the Kid Cudi song. I, in that, the trailer for Miles Morales. I hope that's not just one song that happens somewhere in the game. Yeah, I think it would be really cool because we'll like, just have a feature where you I know have that him the, the Miles, take out his phone or whatever. The Miles Morales me. in the game yeah. is different from the one in the movie. Yeah, but let's have them have a common thread that they both like hip hop or something. Yeah, they're both music fans. Well, they probably both like hip hop. Well, yeah, like have a thing where you take out your phone. Yeah, they're black and they live in New York. <laughs> yeah, right. Also, majority of the world likes hip hop at this point. At least the majority of the the North America. Even does. well, even Japan, they like hip hop. That's true. <laughs> like you take out your fucking phone and you can like play music, Pick and then music. let's say he built in fucking AirPods into his yeah. shit. Like, or no, they'd be like Sony Xperia, whatever the fuck. <laughs> Sony Ericsson brand headphones. Yeah. So just do this. Do some shit like that. Yeah. And then let us like listen to some songs. Or fuck, even import some songs. like, Or let us just connect Spotify. Fuck it. Yeah. Miles Morales is going to jam out to <laughs> Murder by Death or some shit. I'm going to put some weird stuff on. Or just like... Because there's other games that Let do me that. listen to Post Malone. <laughs> yeah, Sunflower. Sunflower. Just put the fucking song in the game. Just, say- <laughs> just put the whole fucking Spider-Verse soundtrack in. Obviously. And then also put in other music. Yeah. Get yeah. a Run the Jewels song in there. Get Run the Jewels. Actually, that'd be kind of hard because Run the Jewels is very hardcore. And Spider Man PS4. A censored version. Mm. It would have to be like an older one because they're. they're well, they most... played. They played. Um, in the, They managed to advertise the movie Booksmart with Nobody Speak. So, yeah, whatever but, version they use in the ad. Bro, the, there's a fucking entire verse in Nobody Speak about Trump trying to fuck his kids. That's just one line. No, that's a, there's a lot more than that. But you you don't have you only have to censor swear words. You don't have to censor content. Uh, you might have to though for a fucking rated T game where like the property is and, associated with Disney. But the thing is, is you know Nathan Drake's allowed to say shit in his games, so that's fine. You know, sure, whatever, do what you want. Put run the jewels in the game. I mean, Guitar Hero still stayed T. Like they cut all the swear words, but they didn't cut any of the bad lyrics. So uh, let's not be a little bitches about swear words. Let's keep them in. Yeah, I mean, I would rather have the whole thing, but Until also, sli- I, I understand I'm, why if your kid's seven years old and wants to play Spider-Man and Miles Morales... It's a rated T game. The kid shouldn't play it anyways. It's not going to stop them. But, Nathan, what's the point of... You? Maybe your ch- your children shouldn't be playing video games. <laughs> It'll warp them. Maybe your children we'll shouldn't play up. video games about Spider-Man, a character for and beloved by children. Yeah. Um... All right, so, uh, so yeah, uh, I watched a documentary this week. What'd you watch? Um, 
Through identical strangers? No. It's about Dave Chappelle. <laughs> oh, yeah? It's about him. It's like kind of a documentary, kind of a show thing um, about him winning the Mark Twain Prize. Oh, yeah? It was very well done. It just talks about, like, Dave Chappelle's like 46. Mm-hmm. He's been doing stand-up for like 30 years. Yeah. He started in when he was 16. It tells, like, the story about, like, his, his like, mom going, like, to work and then taking him from his school afterwards to comedy venues and like being there and watching her 16 year old son just be up there going like pussy (laughs) and she like came down one time he came down and she's like son went a little hard on the pussy jokes this time maybe tone it down (laughs) like she was just like a really supportive mom and like he just talks about like all the shit he did like all the accomplishments and stuff Dave Chappelle has done Mm because despite his his one joke that got him in a lot of trouble uh, uh, like two years ago yeah where I think this is the joke was about Bruce Jenner. Uh, Kendall, or no, uh, Caitlin. Caitlin, fuck! Ah, damn it! I'm sorry. Now I'm a turf. Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, yeah, no. The other, the joke that I think got him under more fire. I mean, that one was bad too. Well, that uh, one he just implies that if uh, if if white people weren't trying to be trans, like this is more. If this was like a black or Hispanic thing, he would. Uh, it would just be white people going like, "What? Shut up." <laughs> n-word get in the corner yeah um the other one uh, is, which i think is just an observation i could see how you could say that's offensive yeah well especially because it's like yes because there are no black transgender people right no but he's not saying there isn't he's saying that if it was only like if it was just fucking like yeah black people and hispanic people trying to be trans and it wasn't a thing that white people were trying to do that no one that people wouldn't care as much yeah he's just saying that if the issues for white people don't become issue like issues for black people and white people like it doesn't become an issue for white people until it's super bad like yeah. police brutality mm-hmm. because it doesn't happen to us and yeah. white people aren't the most empathetic people like because we're not really raised to be you're, all, you're kind yeah. of raised to be a dickhead and like keep it it's like it's about you me, and me, me. yeah the boom the me 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 generation of the boomers <laughs> yeah have c- created the me 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 generation of the millennials and now gen z is making fun of them <laughs> <laughs> and we're gen z well i don't know anymore <laughs> no we need to smuggle ourselves in dude <laughs> we're close enough we can smuggle ourselves it in it depends on where you look it's either 95 or 97 which well, honestly i don't i don't just pretend we're 2 years younger than we are <laughs> lit litty fam no cap XD. <laughs> no cap, baby. Actually, XD is a millennial one. Yeah. No, but like, he made, like, Dave Chappelle, smart, smart guy. Yeah. Does, has, like, the way he writes jokes. Oh, the, 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 the joke that oh, I yeah, got the most it? pissed off at him was uh, when he implied that when his joke was about how, like, the kids who Michael Jackson touched should be grateful. Oh, well, that wasn't that an old one. Nope. Oh, damn it. <laughs> nope. It was after the documentary came out. Oh, yeah. Also, him complaining about cancel culture and how they ruined Louis C.K.'s career. Yeah, well, it's, he also he said something in the documentary as well that he doesn't he that I disagree with. Yeah, and then he was like, "Some dude can be up there telling jokes that are mildly racist, where the audience thinks he's joking, where like the joke is that he's saying racist things, but it's not. He's not actually racist. But then mm-hmm. he, but then Dave Chappelle knows in the back they're like drinking, smoking cigarettes." And they just the guy comes back and he know that Dave knows that that's the most racist man in the room, mm-hmm. like that he's just like yeah he made some casual racist remarks but he comes back and he's like fucking n words, <laughs> so like but Dave Chappelle just thinks he should still be able to do comedy, yeah he does he thinks I'm that not saying he comedy is an art do- form and anyone should be able to perform as his whole I'm point. not saying he shouldn't be able to do comedy I'm saying he shouldn't get a platform <laughs> no. What I say when I think people are bad is that I don't watch them. I go, Dave Chappelle's show was great. I think as an adult, his comedy's not so good. Yeah. So I don't care about his shit anymore. I don't think And I'm not going to actively watch it if I don't like him anymore. I just don't think he's new. I think the one funny joke he ever told in it from his new stand-up, I actually did not watch them. I kind of want to now after the thing. Yeah. Because one story he tells is about how his kid like gave him a call and he's like, Hey dad, I'm at a party and I kind of want to go home. Could you come pick me up? He's like, all right, sure. Where are you? And he's like, I'm here. And he's like, 
I'm at the same fucking party. Oh, I saw that, yeah. Or the one where he like he goes home and he's like he just finished this like tour. He comes into his house. None of his family is home. They knew he was coming home. No one's here to be like, Dad, husband, we missed you so much. And he's like, motherfucker. So he goes around and he like he he was out of weed in his home. Yeah, he finds his kids. He finds and he his kids it. pot and he smokes it. He's like, motherfuck this kid. <laughs> I think Dave Spell's just very interesting, dude. Yeah, I, I, like, listen, I still think Dave Chappelle has made some great comedy. I just think his modern stuff, you know, he's gotten so divorced from, like, the rest of the people that his modern stuff's not as cool. And Yeah, he's he's very much a rich guy. But, yeah. Like, his, the old like, stuff the Chappelle he used show to was said, so critical of society, yeah. and now as society, we've moved forward. So you know how Neil Brennan was, like, the, ha- like, wrote hat. Like, he was the number two guy at the Chappelle show. Yeah. It was Neil and Dave. They wrote the show together. Yeah. So he fucking tells this one. He tells these stories. So do you know about the movie Half-Baked? I do know of it. Yeah. So it's a Dave Chappelle and Neil Brennan movie. Yeah. So Dave Dave Chappelle calls up Neil. He's like, hey, Neil, um, if Universal calls, tell them we're making a weed comedy together. (laughs) And and he's like, "Um, all right, sure, whatever, Dave. He hangs up the phone. 30 minutes later, he gets a call from Universal. (laughs) Says, hey, Neil, um, are you writing a, a... a weed comedy with Dave Chappelle and he's like yes <laughs> when can we expect the script from you guys or like a pre- uh, like a pitch like an outline yeah. yeah and he's like in 30 days time so 29 days later he Thanks. calls Dave and says hey Dave we really need to get started on that weed movie and then 10 hours later they went and pitched it to Universal <laughs> and Dave Chappelle had so much star power at the time they were like here you go go yeah. make the movie <laughs> And it was a critical flop. Yeah. Box office flop. Because you know what it opened up against? What? Titanic. <laughs> and Goodwill Hunting. Ugh. Like, literally, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. Who lives next to Titanic and Goodwill Hunting? Those movies are great. Yeah, exactly. Even if you wanted to go see a comedy, I think there was another better one in the theaters as well. So then he tells this more story, how they made a sketch. Like, Dave Chappelle does, did a lot of improv. Yeah. Like, for scenes. And for the Chappelle show, yeah. Yeah. So there was there was one where he was like, like he get. I think it was the sketch where he got married to Oprah and he got a lot of money so he could quit. Yeah. So he goes and he's like trashing the office. He takes a can, a gar, a piece of garbage, like a garbage can, pours it over Neil's head. A oh, fuck, he premised, premised it with his like, and this is the moment where I think Dave truly blames me for half baked, because as he poured the garbage over my head, he said. This is for half baked. <laughs> and Neil Brennan has like this very dry delivery the whole time. Mm-hmm. But like you could tell, even as he's telling Dave's like up in the raft, just fucking hollering. Like he's like, yeah, these guys are friends. Yeah. Like they're, it was really nice. But I'll, the one, one of the best lines as well is from a, I think it was his, le- like an old Letterman or like Jeff Jam stand up. Yeah. Where he was talking to someone and they say, hey, Dave, you can't say the F word. The yeah. F slur. And he's like, why not? And they said, well, because you're not gay. Well, you're not that. <laughs> yeah. And he says, but uh, so he's like, so he's like, but I could say the N word because I'm black. But I don't think I don't really consider myself the N word because yeah. it is. It's a slur. Yeah. Like you're not like it's not really something you want to be called. It's just a, like a, a thing you get to say. Because yeah. it's a negative word to you. It's like when gay dudes say the F slur to each other. But as like a joke. Yeah. But it's like, it's still bad. You guys probably shouldn't do that. It's like negative. I'm sure there's some dude out there who will tell me, no, you're wrong. It's taking the word back. And I'm like, you're taking yeah. back a negative word. Why do you still want it to exist? Well, no, it's taking it back. It's like, it's like this used to define what I am. So therefore... I own it now and I get to do whatever I want with it and I get to say what it means. Yeah. Right? Um you know, and it's it's the same thing with like the word queer, right? Like yeah. that used to be an insult and now it's become and and they've taken it back and they own it and now it's something means something else entirely. I was actually talking to someone and I'm just I'm going to stop saying F slur. You can censor this if you want. Yeah. Well, you know how people were like, "Oh, f- had a previous connotation of being about sticks on the pyre. Well, that's sort of why. But the thing... It's because they burned gay people. Yeah, exactly. That's what I fucking said. But you know how I know that? TikTok. Louie. Oh. <laughs> There's an episode of Louie where he's playing poker with a bunch of comedians. 
And like this guy, he one of the other guys calls the other dude a f- mm-hmm. and he's the actual gay guy in the room. And he goes, you know, that is really horribly offensive to gay people. And he's like, why? It just means it's a, it's a cigarette or it's uh you could, this the sticks you throw in the fire when they used to burn the witches. Like, yeah, but they actually, they call them f- because it is a bundle of sticks, but they were throwing gay people onto the bottoms of the fire because they didn't deserve their own crosses mm-hmm. as though they are worth less than the fucking wood they're burning. Yeah. So yeah, it's still fucked up. It's still a bad thing to say, but yeah. definitely they own the ability to say it. It's and, their word, yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody's going to be like, yo, I'm going to reclaim this and make it a thing that I call my friends. Oh, God, remember that fucking bad joke from uh, Clark's 2? <laughs> Porch monkey, I'm bringing it back. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. It was funny because, but also, there's no black guy in that whole fucking movie. Yeah. Except for the one cop at the end who's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a re- Actually, you know what? Sorry. Rosario yeah. Dawson's half black. Yeah, you're right. Um, so yeah, that's like the whole... The whole point is that I think they, uh, they, when, everybody keeps telling him it's offensive. Yeah, when it, but he doesn't think it's racist. He doesn't think his grandmother's racist. Yeah. But he said he says some blatantly racist th- shit about Jews. And I think... I don't want to say that social justice warriors ruin comedy. But I think sometimes they do. Uh, like, there's things that are bad that they should attack. Yeah. But then there's like things where the joke is that it's bad well the the thing but is, not like, like a joke where it's like it's so bad that it just feels like bullying it's mm-hmm. not like a fucking rape joke like anthony yeah. jeselnik's rape joke where he just implies that he left a girl uh passed out on a bed he didn't rape her but he left her door wide open like that's yeah like i don't know Je- jeselnik's jokes like that are yeah like offensive inherently yeah and I, the, I don't that's think the intent when i hear he looks that, at the crowd saying them like you guys ready you guys ready for this shit I'm sorry i'm hitting yeah. your thing <laughs> no but i like there's uh, okay here's the thing that people i think don't get because there's no room for subtlety on the internet when somebody criticizes something they don't say when somebody criticizes something they don't say and therefore this person should die for this. They say, this thing, this joke, the way this is said, this is bad. Here is my critique. This is a problem. And you can agree or disagree with the critique. And if enough people agree with the critique, then that means, as a whole, we've decided thing is offensive. Right? Obviously, it has to be if you're the... Obviously, if it's something directed at a group, you have to be kind of part of that group to decide if that's offensive because, like... If you're not part of the group, you can't be offended by it. You can say your piece. If you're a white person acting like talking about how this for black people is offensive, you can say that you think it's offensive. Yeah. But you can't outright say it's offensive. Yeah. Your like, words. Like that white girl <laughs> with Joji. Yeah. Did we talk about Joji on this one or was that the last recording? I think we said that uh, last recording, but we just mentioned it once. Okay. Yeah. So. You know, the girl said, I think Joji's offensive. A bunch of other white people were like, I can't believe this Asian dude said the N-word. And then one black guy shows up, and he's just like, you know, it's a character. I understand that there's the more. There's more context. There's more nuance than what you're thinking. Pink yeah. guy wasn't some failed hip-hop thing that Joji was like, time to go make fucking smooth jams to like because I'm failing in one aspect. It was yeah. two different projects that he was doing. And then she called him a coon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Which, I've been seeing that word come up a lot more. <laughs> Some, I saw a bunch of people calling Terry Crews a coon as well. Ooh. It's not a good... I don't think we're allowed to say that. I don't think we are, but I'm saying it as a quote. As a quote. Mm. Um, you can mute it like you did that thing when I said the f- with Todd <laughs> Phillips, though. Yeah, I'll probably do that for all of these. That's fine. Everyone uh, knows which ones I was saying. Yeah. Well, actually, when we do that, I'll have to... I'll have to censor that in an interesting way because I don't know. Maybe I'll leave that one because just put they say your it own on South Park. <laughs> just put your own fucking one over it where it's just you get like it's your voice like monotone going gay black person. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Black. <laughs> yeah, so Yeah. Uh yeah. But, so, actually you know what the real rough one was? 
What? It was during the trans joke that Dave Chappelle made. Yeah. It was the first, when his special first came back, and some lady kind of just said, wow, that's fucked up that he did that. And it was also that he was talking... It's the same one where he talks shit on cancel culture. Yeah. And someone just responded to have a conversation and said, I don't know, I thought the special was quite funny, and I think all the jokes were totally okay. And then the girl added... A fucking, like, in the guy's bio, he said he volunteered at some fucking local food shelter or whatever. Yeah. And she added the food shelter and be like, this is the kind of mans you allow to serve people food? And it's like, okay, so this is exactly what Dave Chappelle was talking about. See, that's that's stupid, but you can't... I, if that's I think one example, obviously. Exactly, one example. My vibe is, like, you can critique something. And if you're part of a group and enough people in that group go, like, hey, this is really offensive and bigoted and it's like this and it's that, then, like... It becomes that because it's decided that it is that. Yeah. Right. And my vibe is like, if a if a comedian, the problem with comedians com- complaining about cancel culture is that they never get canceled. They say something stupid. The crowd thinks it's a bad thing to say and it's not funny. And then they're like, oh, see, it's cancel culture. Everybody's so sensitive. It's like, no, you wrote a fucking bad joke that isn't funny. Yeah. Like, you're an idiot. But then there is cancel culture where it's like maybe we should actually put effort into not allowing this person to work anymore and that's when somebody does something bad and it still kind of never really works out yeah people still louis ck is still doing shows he just doesn't get specials anymore yeah like people still get work like if you're worried about oh this person's canceled they're still getting work. Mm-hmm. Kevin Hart got canceled, and he's still the biggest comedian on the face of the fucking planet. Kev- oh, man. My, my sister's boyfriend told me about this funny Kevin Hart story. <laughs> Kevin Hart's yeah. married. Yeah. On one of his tours, he cheated on his wife. Yeah. I'm sure he's done it more than once. Almost certainly. Yeah. Because he's famous. Uh, but I'm ch- I, honestly, since he's still with his wife, it might be like a, like an, a thing. Or it's abuse. Yeah, it does well. But, you know. Like some- Jay-Z. Uh, yeah. So... Um, so Kevin, so some lady was like that he yeah. fucked. She was like, I have proof. If you don't give me $15 billion, I'm going to put out, I'm going to fucking expose you. And he was like, Hey, fuck you. And just put it out himself. saying he cheated on his wife. That's funny. So it's like, yeah, eat shit. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's talk about something else. <laughs> yeah. It's a bummer. It is a bummer. Uh, do you know what's not a bummer? Yeah. Fucking 20th Century Boys, baby. That one of the movies you watched this week? Uh, no. I told you I watched Did you watch... Did you tell me all the movies that you watched? Oh, yeah. Also, I rewatched Perfect Blue with the the fam, finally, after yeah. like six months of saying we would do it. Not the fam, the friends, but... The yeah. friends. But yeah, the friends I get, the fam. Uh, yes. They're the group. When you have a small... when Well, when it's you and your... your <laughs> when you one of your members of your fam is in your friend group, I guess that's an easy transition to make. Yeah, I mean... But I got fucking... <laughs> I have four siblings. Yeah. I got a I got a step sibling. Yeah, I don't have any. My family siblings. sucks. It's huge. <laughs> uh, so, me, Chris, Emma, Emily, and Connor. One of the Connors. Guess which Connor? The uh, one that you're friends with. Yeah. Uh, all watched Perfect Blue. Yeah, I'm the one who attracts all the Connors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Perfect Blue's still good. Fucking Connor. Um, Acton Connor. <laughs> yeah. He fucking. The jo- you ever see Blake's fucking pillow that he has in his house? Yeah, it's Tom Hiddleston, right? Yeah, because Connor has a vague Tom Hiddleston look. Only when he's clean shaven. Yeah. Because Connor, they sent me a picture recently, and he has a, his facial hair now. I'm like, it's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I would buy a pillow with Nick Cage's face on it. Yeah. Connor's a hot boy, better. though. Yeah? Yeah. Which one? Both. Okay. One, well, man, the fucking Connor... Connor, who watched Perfect Blue. Yeah. That dude, he used to be short. He got tall real fast. <laughs> like, literally, I got... I I grew I grew to six feet pretty quickly mm-hmm. in my life. Like, it was like grade eight, I was like five eight. By grade nine, I was six. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, everyone else had a steady growth. Yeah, I had more of a steady growth. Yeah. So, yeah, you were... When we met, you were probably, uh, like, an inch shorter than me, and now you're an inch taller than me. I think so. Yeah. So, um, I, 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 there's still people that I am friends with who I'm just like, hey, you guys, that dude's short, like Michael, Blake's roommate. Yeah. But then I go stand next to him, he's the same height as me. Because <laughs> he has... <laughs> no, he actually was short, like, real small dude, and then he... He has did... a short personality. Don't be mean to Michael. <laughs> hey, man, take that what you mean. That's a mean thing to say. <laughs> short personality? 
Oh, oh. <laughs> that's the title of this episode no fuck certainly. you you okay if you come just, up with something but you don't even fucking message me titles anymore i don't yeah it's because it's because like i just wind up picking because well, i'm the only one on, on who's actually on the fucking podcast anymore yeah because uh, we can't bring chris on maybe, maybe well we can big bring chris on well we, we can now we can't bring davis on oh no because <laughs> he lives far away did he move recently yeah he moved recently he's in alberta now Oh, that's nice. Alberta's a good place. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you've never... Oh, yeah, you've probably never been. I've never been to Alberta. Alberta's also, really cool. Also, when he said he was going, I was like, the Alabama of Canada. No, that's Edmund... Fuck, that's in Alabama. <laughs> no, that's Saskatchewan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Winnipeg... <laughs> Texas. The Texas of Canada. No. No, no, no. I mean... Texas is cool. Alberta is the Texas of Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Because they got the Calgary Stampede. Oil. Bulls everywhere. Oil. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they depend on it, despite the fact that they shouldn't. <laughs> But they, uh, it's like if you put Texas and Colorado together, you get Alberta. Yeah. Because you go, you go to Edmonton. I would say that's more. I don't know Calgary. Literally two hours apart is fucking Austin, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, Denver, Colorado. <laughs> well, no, not really Denver, because Denver is still a city. Yeah. But Banff is a small town surrounded by mountains. Beautiful place. Everyone should go. We should mm. go. I want to do like a friend trip once COVID's done. Me too. Yeah. I was going to say uh, what I'd love to do with the with the pals because it's actually, it's not far away and it's a classic place to go. Fucking NYC, baby. I don't know. NYC's sick. I've never been. I went in grade 12. It was cool. Oh, yeah. You can drink or do anything there. No, and, I couldn't. Yeah. But like, it's awesome. Like, we are, <laughs> I don't know how many people know this because I don't talk about it as much anymore. I have seen two shows on Broadway in my life. Oh, good for you. One of them was Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. Nice. <laughs> That's right, baby. That's your claim to fame. Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. I saw it. Nobody died, unfortunately, Damn. while I was there. Bummer. No, okay. So that show is so dumb. It's badly written. Uh, the story's really just basically the Raimi movies, like specifically the first one. But it's so dumb they added this weird Ar- arachne side pro- thing where there's like destiny but the effects the fucking performing the fact that they have all these spider-men swinging around over the audience and like all those people died doing it it's so good <laughs> so despite it's an incredible stunt show almost yeah but also it's got songs by you too <laughs> Okay. I'm bouncing off the walls. I also want to go to... Um, the- I bet I could find the... I'm going to... You know what? After the pod, I'm going to show... I'm going to play no, a couple songs off of it. You can show me at my house because I got to okay. go soon. Okay. Because I'm picking up Chris and Emma. Right. Okay. Um, I have to get groceries and then I'll go to your house. That's fine. Um, I also want to go... Din what? at your home? I don't know. Maybe. Actually, you know what? How about... Can you pick... We'll talk about that this after, because I think I have a lot of like hamburgers at home. All right, I just need buns. buns. Yeah, buy some buns for you. Because I have, I don't need those buns, boy. I also want to go like down south. Oh yeah, but like I want to, I want like white privilege down south. I'd love to go to like Austin. Oh no, I meant like Cuba or Dominican. Oh, sorry, you meant down south. Yeah, Yeah. down south east. (laughs) Down south, like not in the same. Like an island. Technically North America, but also South America. I think I think Cuba is Central America. Central America is actually just North America. I think you're wrong. Mex- no, as a continent, it's one. It's considered the same thing. Central America is not a continent. It's just a place. Yeah, but it's like in between Mexico and South America. But Mexico is considered Central America. No, Mexico is considered North America. What the fuck is South America then? South America is like Brazil. Whatever, who cares? I, it, it's it doesn't matter. Argentina, sense. but like I went, man. Colombia. I went to, like that last November. Yeah, I think I told. Oh, I I was there. I went actually. I listened to the first episode of the podcast on my way to on the flight there. Yeah. Um. The uh, we went to we accidentally got to this like adult only res- We we knew it was an adult only resort, which we were like fucking sick because no fu- kids kids suck. But then it turned out it was like kitty. it would, no no what. It fucking turned out is our travel agent is a goddamn god and got us in a VIP uh, part of the resort. Oh shit. For no extra cost. It was like a three thousand dollar resort that we paid a thousand dollars for. That's dope. But it was because half of it was under construction, but it was all the way on the other side, so it's not like it woke us up or anything. Uh 
which is fucking nice. Like, have you ever gone to one of those places? Yeah. I've been While you were legal age? No. Okay. Normally, those places only have, like, Presidente, which is like a... It's just yeah. like a... It's a light beer. It's pretty good. It's not a bad beer. I have a Presidente shirt. Yeah. It's not... It's. I like it. I, yeah. I had the option to get other beers because at the premium bar... They had other beer. They had Budweiser. They, they had, had Heineken. They Sapporo. had Coors Light. They had Sapporo. <laughs> Sapporo's fancy. They had like, and it didn't cost anything. I've it was you know all what? all inclusive, and I was like, God damn, this place. More than and once in my life, I have bought Sapporo due to the fact that it's a cool looking can and a great commercial. Yeah, Anyways. because every other beer commercial is like, Hey, bros, do you like getting drunk and harassing women at a party? Drink Bud Light. Yeah. <laughs> That's other beer ads. Sapporo is like, in Japan, we make beer really fancy. And here's like this whole CG pan through of the inside of a can that's also a factory that makes beer. Yeah. And I'm like, and then the can's like, it's it's a chunker. And I'm like, fuck yeah. What was the one that I had? Oh, Asahi Dry. Oh, Asahi. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I had that while well, eating. The first time I had it, I fucking, or- we were going to see Fiddler in Toronto. Yeah. And I got this fucking can. It was like this fucking Ian big. Ian is currently wearing a Fiddler shirt. I'm always wearing this Fiddler shirt. If I go pick up Chris and he's wearing the same shirt again, <laughs> I'm gonna kick his ass. <laughs> but also, we're gonna we're gonna be taking him off very quickly. If you know what I mean. We're going swimming. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, gamers. Yeah. Rise up. Let's go on vacation. We should. <laughs> Once COVID's done. Also, 20th century boys. Yeah. How was that? Let me talk about that. It's a fucking fast, uh, a fantastic manga, manga, uh, that you still need to read. Oh yeah, it's uh, so it's. By the way, if you don't want, if you don't know what Twentieth Century Boys is, it's is it by, a f- completed manga? It's so I'm buying the the no, better North American editions called the Perfect Editions as they come out. Yeah. You should probably read Monster first if you want to get in touch with like how his art and and writing style is, especially because that's a more straightforward book. Mm-hmm. You can, I mean, I have all of it. You can borrow. I'll it borrow it like. later. When you're uh, done with it, I'm done with Monster. I'm, Jesus I'm reading. Christ, 20th stop putting Century so much Boys. pressure on me. Fuck. I'm done with Monster. I'm reading 20th Century Boys. 20th Century Boys is about, uh, essentially, a guy named Kenji in the year 1997, mm-hmm. um, who is essentially trying to solve this mystery where th- there is a cult that worships the Book of Prophecy that him and his friends made. That was the plot of the villains in their little hero story that they would play when they were like 10, 12 years old or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so there's this like cult based around this book of prophecy there th- where they're going to try to make the world end on December 31st, 2000. So. so wait, December 31st, 2000. So yeah, a year after Y2K. Because Japan considered the turn of the century that New Year. Oh, OK. All right. So the plot of it is there's a su- some people with superheroes? No. People with powers? No. Just cool dudes. It's literally like these kids when they were kids loved superhero shit. Like love like uh-huh. you know kaiju stuff and they're like now they're like 30s or 40s and like it turns out the stuff that they they were talking about like somebody that they must have known as kids like kept that pl- that fake evil plan they made up and is now putting it into actual real production. Okay, so it's a bunch of childhood friends get together to stop their other shit. Stop a cult, friend. yeah. Like their their childhood friends started a cult and they're trying to stop it. Yeah. Okay. But it's it definitely goes places you wouldn't expect. All right. Uh, it's but it's like Naoki Urasawa's stuff is very much based on like down to earth, very like cinematic stuff mm-hmm. uh but that's why i'd say read monster first because M- monster is fucking incredible and that's the one about a doctor who like <laughs> saves the life of this kid over the life of the mayor and then you know that kid grows up to be a serial killer mm. and now he's got to stop him and right his wrong okay maybe Monsters great. probably. I, I I read a lot of mangas. <laughs> read Monster and then read Twentieth Century Boys. All right, but w- you might want to wait a while before Twentieth Century Boys because, like I was saying, Viz is re-releasing. So they have all the all of it, all twenty two volumes, in the original volume size that they made back when that was coming out. Like I think two thousand eight to mm-hmm. two thousand twelve, 
But then, like, in 2017, they started making the perfect editions, which are new translations, and they retain the Japanese sound effects. Um, and they're double size volumes. Cool. Yep. It sounds good. It's great. I'll probably read it at some point. Sick. Monster has a great anime, by the way. I watched something else this week. What did you watch? I watched Eric Andre's new stand-up special. Oh, is it good? No. (laughs) (laughs) Really? I think there's some very funny moments in it. Obviously, it's stand-up. But overall, I don't really like Eric Andre's shtick of being super gross all the time. Yeah. Like, it's also the energy he gives off. Yeah. A lot of the times, I'm just like, man, you're just kind of making me uncomfortable. And that's his thing is he wants to make people uncomfortable. Like his opening bit is that he's he's a cop in New Orleans because he filmed the special in New Orleans. Yeah. Is that he gets out of the cop car, he stumbles out with a giant bong, a giant bag of weed, and a bunch of narcotics. Yeah. And he walks around drunk, just smoking weed in front of people and just offering everyone drugs and pills. And then like an old white woman's like, "Can I get a hit of that?" It's like, "All right, yeah, that's what you were aiming for." So yeah. then he goes on stage. He's just super gross. His best bit is the bit they advertise the stand-up special. The to cops me, bit. The cops bit, where he's talking about how co- it's cops are a symbol of white oppression. Yeah, and but and it's but they it's, play reggae for the theme. It's like, yeah, it's the, the, like the final part of the bit is just like how uh, this cop is beating the shit out of you because you look different and the, and the police were created by white white protestants to protect their interests. Yeah. And then, and and then, then it's, it's like, just like... Jamaica, man, don't... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because it's like the Bad Boys song works in the context, but when you probably listen to that whole song, it probably has like some anti... Anti-cop. Yeah. Um, but then, and then there's like one story he tells where they did Air, the Eric Andre show, like they did a tour of it yeah. with him and Hannibal, and that there was one episode he came out completely naked. Yeah. He jumped into the crowd and a kid, not a kid, but like a younger guy, like probably yeah. like an 18 year old. Yeah, he got Eric Andre's entire flaccid penis in his mouth oh. because the guy, because Eric stage dived and his crotch landed perfectly in this man's face. So he's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> but like, then there's just like things where he talks about how he just was like a piece of shit. Got home one time and he hit up uh, like this girl that he used to fuck. Yeah, saying the t- super romantic, come over. <laughs> <laughs> and then she got he got this like passive aggressive ass shit like text from the girl's current boyfriend oh. and he just started goofing on him and I'm like that's funny because this dude is such like a hey Eric it's real nice to hear from you if you ever speak to my girlfriend like that ever again I'm we're gonna we're, you're gonna catch these hands friend and it's like oh my god yeah and then he's like I understand that you're a comedian I don't know who you are though <laughs> it's like god man, oh yeah it's a uh, it's just like one of those things where it's like this guy was overprotective and a shitty boyfriend. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of of the Eric Andre show. I like clips from it. I yeah. don't like whole episodes. I don't like watching it. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah, but that's uh, the point. That is his whole mantra. Trick is that it's uncomfortable. Yeah. My favorite bit on Eric Andre show is not one on the regular set though. It, it is one of the ones out in the world. Mm. And it's... Is it the cop uh, one? <laughs> no. it's This one is one I've seen on YouTube a million times, and every time I say it, nobody knows this bit. Okay. I am the octopus. I don't know it. <laughs> it's so good. My top three Eric Andre bits. I showed my mom this, and she laughed her ass off. My top three is the one where it's Eric just comes, like, runs up to a bunch of people with cinder blocks, and they place the cop car. He's like, you guys, you want to see something? Cops don't give a shit anymore. And he just takes the cinder block and slams it through the window. And he's just beating the fuck out of it. And Hannibal comes out like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, what? You're doing some cool ass shit. That's what you're doing. And they both start beating the shit out of the cop car. Oh, and Hannibal's a cop. Hannibal's dressed up as a cop. Yeah. Then there's the tall one <laughs> where it's like the giant man, like the kid, two kids in a trench coat, but it's two fully grown men. Yeah. And he's like, Harry, I'm looking for an automobile. <laughs> That one is good, and then the and last then of course, one, like legalized branch. There's another, uh, another cop one he did with James Adomian. Oh yeah, it's a lot smaller. Where he like runs into a deli, and then the, where James Adomian's a cop, and he's just like he arrests him. He's like, "You're going to jail, pal." And he turns around and with the handcuffs on, like, and they look lovingly in each other's eyes, and they just start fucking making out That's in the funny. middle of this deli. Yeah. Oh, in 
Uh, on the meltdown, the Eric Andre bit that was the funniest was... Oh, the, I made the worst bit on television. <laughs> I made the worst bit on television where he runs out and a woman's giving birth yeah, to... It's his wife. It's his wife giving <laughs> she gives birth. birth to a burrito. <laughs> to a burrito. <laughs> he takes a bite and then he walks up to the a burrito truck and says, Hey man, can I get a burrito? And they hand him a baby. And he throws, he's like, I have just made the worst bit on television. <laughs> Whips it at the wall and says, Fuck Yeah! <laughs> That's good. Do you yeah. remember the sheriff of Nottingham from the meltdown? Uh, I forgot that one. It's the it's the sheriff of Nottingham comes out while uh, Jonah and Kumail are doing like their like in between bits. Yeah, like where they're just talking, and he's like, "I am looking for Robin Hood," <laughs> and it's James. That's James the Domian. Yeah, and the care the it's the sheriff of Nottingham from like the fucking really like the I think the Russell Crowe oh. Robin Hood where he he's like I watched that movie and I just feel like the sheriff of Nottingham is super fucking gay where he's like I'm going to marry Maid Marion oh Ugh. like he yeah. thinks he's just super gross and that's where the impression started that's funny but it's just James Adomian it does like the best character work like uh, if you if you're out there anyone listening go look up his funny or die um, Jesse the Body Ventura for President Ed. Well, didn't he? All, isn't he also um, Bane in Harley Quinn? Yes, he is. Yeah, he also does. He's he does some. He does Bernie Sanders a lot. Oh, yeah. Like you know the guy Anthony Tumiak or whatever the guy who does the President Show. Yeah. Uh, like the Comedy Central version of the fucking whatever Colbert shitty animated show he had. Yeah. But the Comedy Central one that was live action where an actual guy does it. They used to tour together during the election where... To do... Yeah, Anthony would be Trump and he would be Bernie. Yeah. And like, the difference is that Anthony like fucking hates... (laughs) No, he doesn't like Trump, but Adomian kind of agrees with Bernie. Yeah. But so it's like a loving uh, I think Bernie... Even though I've seen more Trump impressions, I think Bernie's an easier impression. Oh, yeah. Medicare for all is what this country needs (laughs) in order to become a good place to live. All right, your Bernie sucks. Let's wrap this up. Hey, fuck you. (laughs) Uh, Hey, uh, the podcast is over. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, Oh, wait, I also played Fury this week. (laughs) How dare you? Yeah. All right. (laughs) Uh, so the podcast is over. Thank you so Talk much for listening. I beat it. Uh, follow us on Twitter at the Media Hole, uh, tw- uh, Twitch.tv slash the Media Hole, uh, TikTok at the Media Hole, and of course, uh, <laughs> www.whenyourballsgetstucktoyourleg.tumblr.com. Change your name. <laughs> Ian ran from the fucking garbage can to get that. Yeah. Uh, so you can actually finish. All right, yeah, and you can find Ian at Struggles V on everything. Do you have a bit for this? No. I forgot. I usually have a bit for that. What? I don't know. I usually just pull out something that I you're don't know. not I already involved mentioned with. One Piece this week, so I don't have to do it. All right, thank you so much, guys. See you.